Keep things cooking. What is happening? Let's jump straight into it. Welcome along, guys. This is Big Grandpa. And uh, glad to see that you've all joined us here. I know we got a few viewers on there. If you're there, give me a shout out, a hi, hello. Tell me I'm ugly, whatever you like. I don't get paid for the good looks. And uh, great to see you guys here. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to build, I'm going to show you guys something that everybody wants to learn. Now, for you guys that have done it, I'm going to make this very, very simple because you might find a few little tips you've never seen. I often get this from people that they didn't know this or that because I show them something and they're like, wow, that's pretty cool, Grandpa. So here we go. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to build or import a custom asset and how to do it totally inside of Object Builder. And I know we started this yesterday, but I was kind of like in about a three and a half hour um, stream and I was pretty well taxed by the end of it. I think I just needed a break. So I thought I'll come back today and I'll refresh you guys and show you exactly what we're going to do. So as you can see, I've got a lot of custom assets and stuff which I've moved in uh, to my map. And uh, these are all based upon real things. So the question remains, how can I quickly, I mean really quickly, get assets into the game? That's what we're here for, guys. I'm going to show you some very simple techniques that by the time you finish this, there's a good chance you're going to be bringing your own buildings in assets really fast. So what is today's subject? Today's subject... We're going to be bringing in a house and this house is going to be available for you guys in its completed form but also it's going to um, have all the instructions here information downloads which i'll add on to my uh, google drive so they'll be there ready for you guys to download as well so without any further ado let's jump right into it okay if you want the files that i've got these files came straight off of sketchfab we just picked a building yesterday. Thought this was a good one. It's Little Shed, and it's by uh, appropriately Shedmon. <laughs> you can download this. It'll come with a bunch of files. If you're on my Discord, all you guys have got to do to make it simple. One of the good members uploaded it onto there. Equilibrium dropped it on there for us. It's a three-part file. You can download it or just jump on to the actual site, grab it off there, and be sure when you're doing this with models. Uh, that you're going to simply um, add the uh, the information regarding the attribution rights. It's very simple when you download it, it'll tell you all that. Let's jump straight into it. So if you've downloaded those files, um, all you need to make sure that you guys have running on your computer is you want to be sure that you have your um, object builder and all your add-ons and all the rest of that all installed. Excuse my desktop, but you should have Daisy tools. If you're not sure on that, I'll have a tutorial um, uploaded on the website soon, which will show you all that stuff. So Daisy Tools, and you're going to have Object Builder in here. And so it's where we're going to build today. And we're going to have some fun. I'm going to show you some really cool things on here. I'm going to move fairly quick, but don't worry. This video will be saved. So if you want to rewind it, check it out. You can do that as well. So let's get right to the point. Here we go. So guys, it's very, very simple. <clears throat> Either go to the website that I told you, which is Sketchfab. You can grab this building or any building, or jump on my Discord and you can grab the files, which are actually in the general chat by Equilibrium, and you can use either ones. Otherwise, wait till I've done the whole thing. I'll give you every single file you guys need to create your own buildings that actually work. So this is a cool building that we found, and it's just a sample one. Now, often people ask me, how do I bring a model in? How do I add the textures to it? How do I make the doors work? All that'll be covered pretty rapid fire class right here. So on your P drive, the first thing you obviously want to do is create a folder. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to use the same structure, good old Dino Vino's users, and we're going to call it Toot Shed. Toot, good old Dino Vino shout out. Toot Shed. And that is where our files are going to be located in. So all you'll need to do is go and grab those particular files. Now, I already have them downloaded in another folder. So I'm just going to grab those quickly. And um, this will just make it easier. So you'll get a zip file. If you know what a zip file is, it's pretty straightforward. So we'll go in there. We'll grab houses, two shared. I've got one in here. And 
all I'm going to do is grab out of there the little shed source, which will be all of this stuff sitting in here. To make it simple, jump over, pull these files down, and I'll just save them so you can see how we do it. So we jump into our toot folder, toot, toot shed, and we will just create these as a source so we know where we are. Always good to keep your source folders, guys, because you want to know later on where you put the originals in case you mess up the ones you're working on. So we'll save that one in there. We'll go back and we'll take the next file because he put it in three files. I had a problem with my download yesterday. Don't know if it's fixed, but I'm not going to test it and grab the last file. Save that. You will need WinZip or WinRAR, anything that will unzip. They're all free programs. So now if I go back into my toot folder, we will find that I should have those folders saved in a source, just like that. So all you do, we just have to extract. And that's going to extract the files. Very, very simple. All right. And if you joined us now, give us a shout out, say hello, so I'm not all alone. Good to see uh, people there watching. And I will just delete those old ones because we don't need those. There is our source files. So what we've got in here is two folders. The first folder is going to be your source. And in this case, it's going to be uh, the house, which is our object file. The second will be our textures. So these are all the textures that are used for your particular house. Pretty straightforward. Um, bear with me for one second. I'm just going to make sure that we publish this on the stream so people know there's a stream happening. Live stream. And I'll just take the link from my YouTube. That way you guys will know. So here we go. Videos. This is the way I do it. I'm sure there's a simpler way. Go to live. Grab the shareable link and then I'll just paste that in here. Like that. And then just publish. So there we go, guys. That'll let people know. Right. Okay. So have you joined us? Very simple. All we've done, we've just gone in and we've simply just downloaded these files off of Sketchfab. You're going to see how quick, I'm going to show you the textures today, guys, and I'm going to show you some cool tools. So don't go anywhere. Um, here it is. Grab that file, create a folder like I have, and you'll end up with two folders. One will be your textures like this, and one will be your source. This will be your object. Now, for a lot of you guys out there, this is going to have to be imported into Object Builder because we're going to use Object Builder today as our means of building because Object Builder is fun when you know how to use it. So here we go. Let's get Object Builder cranked up on here. Now, I tried yesterday and I did show people if I import the OBJ file directly into here, I was getting an error. Now, you will get this with some models but I'll show you a way to fix it. So there it is, click import, tell it the size, error. Don't stress about it. That'll be a scale issue, but you're gonna get these files when I'm done anyway. So you can mess around with them to your heart's content, but I'm just showing you the simple things you'll encounter. So let's just import our OBJ file. And once we got that, we're gonna export it. Now, this is my personal choice. I prefer to put all my models in FBX. I know some people like different ones, but I have just found that for some reason, I have less problems um, putting them in FBX. So let's grab the little shed source, open the model. Now, if we zoom out, the clown that made this, no, I'm sorry, that's not a nice thing to say. I'm so glad he did make it. He made the house so big in scale that it's useless. So all you got to do is scale it down. So we're just going to scale this down to a reasonable size. And then we'll bring it in to the other one. There we go. File, export. And we're going to export the entire collection. So we want to make sure that when we select it, we collect everything. File, export, FBX. 
this is pretty straightforward stuff. When you've done it a few times, it's straightforward. But if you're not familiar, follow along because I'll give you the files and you'll start to toy with it anyway. So here's our shared. So all we need now is to save this as an FBX. And we're going to save that in there. And we'll call it toot shed. And just make sure that we've got the appropriate things selected. Um, we're not going to limit. It's all going to be the active collection. Everything else is good. And we're just going to export into there. Close that. Don't need to save that at all. I could have, but I didn't need to. Go back in Object Builder. And this is how we get our model into the actual game. So if we go in here and go into our source and to shed, there it is. Now it's going to ask us what things do we need. We don't need a camera, of course, and um, you won't need light. Uh, all these other things are just part of the, the building and it's divided them, which is great. Don't worry about the textures or anything else. Now scaling is always funny. Normally, Daisy kind of likes you to set the scale manually. So there is the building brought into Object Builder. Okay, so we can pause for a second and we can have a quick sneaky peek at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my second screen and I'm going to open up my uh, viewer so you guys can see a little preview of the model in Object Builder. There it is. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so there's our building. And now that we've got our building, all we need to do is add the textures to it. So today I'm just going to add the textures and then we're going to work on the things you need to make the building work in game. Looking at this object here at the moment, what you're actually looking at is just an image. So you're only really seeing an image of the building. It has no, hey, Fuzzy, what's happening? Um, <laughs> and uh, as you can see, all we're seeing here at the moment is basically the building. So here's how we're going to texture things today. And I'm going to show this to you guys because it really is pretty straightforward. It's not that hard. Right. What we do is we're going to see, we're going to look at each one of these and just add a texture to them. Before we do that, make sure that you have the resources library open. That's this section down here. Okay, that's really important. Other ones you'll need to tick, but this is going to make work a lot easier for you guys, especially with RV mats and things. So here we go. Obviously, if we try to bring the textures in at the moment, they're not going to come in because for a simple reason that our textures at the moment are not in the correct format. Okay, these are all PNGs. Now, we can convert these over pretty quickly. It's not a real hassle at all. When you guys go to do this, all you need to do to convert your textures, and you'll do this with just about most models if you're importing them, you'll do the image to PAA, and you'll just find wherever that directory is. So we go into the P drive, to shed, and then we look for our textures. And it says no valid files in there, which is okay. <laughs> Don't you be a jack to me, you old crazy boy. Okay, so we'll go into P, go down into our toot folder, just down the bottom here, toot shed textures okay and there's all our textures as you can see right once your textures are in there all you want to do is override any existing you can put them in a custom folder which i want to do in this case i want to move them into a data folder so in that that one there where i go my um gotta get the right folder because it's showing me another one p go into toot test shed and in the root of it, I'm going to make a new folder and call it data. Okay. And that's where I'm going to save all of my image. So it's going to go into toot, toot shared source. Actually, I don't want it to be in source. I want it to be in the root of it. So let me just check that again. So I want to go toot shared, make new folder, and I want it to be right there after the root of that folder. Like that. So there's a P toot folder to my toot shed and it's in data and you can thank Dino Beano's for that because that's how I learned to do this stuff when I'm putting some of my toots together. <laughs> so all we do is hit process. It's going to go through and process all those files 
and it's going to drop them all into that folder that we created. So whenever you're building a model, whatever it is, if it's a shed, you always have a data folder which contains all of your images. And then you're going to have obviously your main model and so on and so forth. A couple of scripts will be in there as well. So um, we're going to be adding those shortly. But first, let's get the textures done. So that's just converting those over for us. And you can sit there and see them doing its little thing. Um, do large icons or we can do thumbnails if we want. Uh, it won't actually show them that's right in that model, but you can see it's doing it. So we'll leave that go while that's doing that. Well, let's go back to our model. Now, once that's done and it's done processing, we can start the process of adding the textures. Now, a lot of people aren't sure exactly how to add textures to a model. So I'm going to demonstrate here how to add them inside of Object Builder and how to UV map them. This is a big subject, guys. People who don't know how to UV map always get confused. How do I add textures to a building? I downloaded a model, it's got textures, it, they don't appear. Here I'm going to show you exactly the process that I like to use when I'm using Object Builder. And it's pretty straightforward. Let's just check our... Let's have a look and see how it's going. It's probably churning along there in the background. Let's have a look. There it goes. It's almost done. A couple more to go. Now, with your textures, you're going to have uh, a bunch of them. You probably won't use certain textures. Welcome along, guys. If you just joined us, we're going to build a house here by importing a model and getting it working in DayZ. And I'm going to share that with you. So don't go anywhere. Stick around. All we're doing here is uh, we've just downloaded the model from here, which is Sketchfab. It's this building here. We're going to get this all in and working in game. And um, it's free to download this. I will give you all the files. So all we've done is we've just converted the text images that it came with, which is simple. You just use the image to PAA. If you've got any questions, guys, and you just joined us, you want me to recap, I'll tell you something. Please let me know because that's why Grandpa is doing all this to simply help you guys out. So we're just about done with our import and then we can get laying our textures on top of our model. So guys, this is Object Builder. It's a free program that comes with Daisy tools. Thank you for joining me, guys. I'm glad to see this new people joining on here. Um, this is Object Builder. It is free. It's part of the Daisy tools. Uh, most people don't know how to use it or don't know how to use it correctly. So I'm going to show you guys the techniques that I use to take a free model, for example, this one, and get it in game and working. Okay. It's not that hard. You don't have to be a genius. You don't need a degree. And technically you probably don't need to know Blender. Okay. So if you guys are worried about that, don't sweat. You can get through using Object Builder for most stuff on its own. All right. Our image files are all converted. So all we did for you guys that just joined us, um, when we downloaded the files, we got a whole lot of images like this, which were all PNGs, but we just want them in the format that we need. So we simply just opened up our uh, image to PAA program and it converted them over. So here it is here. Let me flick the uh, the double screen so you guys can see what it the model looks like on the other screen. And then we'll start adding textures and having fun. Here it comes. There you go. So that's what a model will look like if you just import it and you do nothing to it. Now, that's just an image. It has no uh, geometry. You can run straight through it. You can't open the doors. You can't look through the windows or anything. So we're going to solve that problem really, really quick. First point of call is our textures. So once you've got your, um, your object builder up, make sure you open the resource library. Make sure it's ticked. That'll appear down here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add the textures to each face. Now this model itself, if I select it all and press E, it has no mapped textures to the surfaces. So there's, it doesn't know what's supposed to be on there. So each surface has to have an image. Let me demonstrate how we do that. And it always tells me to take a break in the middle of it. <laughs> Let's look at this. Uh, we can see over here this front face. Let's go over and add a texture to that. So how do you add a texture? 
First of all, you look at the surface you want, holding down the shift key and you drag, actually you've got to select the faces up here. So this is going to select the face and you simply drag till you get the surface you want highlighted. See that there? So we can see it's highlighted that particular surface, which we're now going to add our texture to. Right. So let's add a texture. How do you do that? Make sure we get the front face of that because you can get the back faces. So if you're ever unsure, just drag it across and have a look and see how it goes. And that's the face. How do you add a texture? Watch. This is fairly straightforward. Using the resource tab over here, as I said, it's opened up via this one. These, by the way, guys, you can click, double click, drag them where you want. I like to have this layout, as I said yesterday. Um, this is the work I've done if I want to go back a step. This is allows me to check all my textures and RAV mats. These are my LODs, properties, and these are all the components that go with it. Okay, here we go. So all you do is you go to the model folder. Now, if you go into your model folder and you look, actually, we haven't saved this yet. So let's save this. Save. And we're going to make sure we save it in the right folder. So we're going to go P. And this is the tut I'm doing, which as I said, guys, I will share this with you guys. So this will be tut underscore shed. And it's saved to there. So now that we've got that, we can now look through. So I don't go too fast. What I'm going to do is, uh, let me just check something for a sec. Um, hello, Scott Nelson, Ola from the US. <laughs> is Object Builder Daisy specific utility? Yes, it's, it is. And it's very straightforward to use. Um, I've done some editing in XML yet, yeah, console, but nothing beyond that. We'll watch this because you will learn a few things. And believe me, it, it'll help you out a lot. Uh, yeah, Sashkosh, I actually have trouble with the model config also. All right, well. Tell you what, DM that to me and we, we can have a look at that as well coming up. So let's get into this. I don't know why. I got this thing over here, guys, that is supposed to read out the, uh, the chats. And you do this and it says it's connected. It says it's connected and it doesn't do anything. So I'll minimize it and see if it does anything. Um, so, all right, let's add a texture. So once again... You need to select the faces, which is this button right here. Hold down the shift, left mouse, and drag over a surface to select that whole face. Okay? So that once again, select faces, shift, left mouse button, drag across, face selected. Then you go into your data where we just extracted all those. And we're going to look for the walls. So the good thing about this little utility here is that if you're not sure, you can right click open and actually preview what the image is. And that is our walls. How do we know? Simple. We can see right here. That's what the walls look like. Okay. So we know that's the right texture. So to add that texture to it, Remember, it's not mapped. We're mapping it Scott as... Scott we... Nelson said awesome. <laughs> I heard you, Scott. Awesome. It's talking to me now. I can hear it. Thank you. Um, so here we go. So now we've selected the surface. I'm going to right-click and use. Okay. Now come over here. And if you look, we can see that it's mapped that wood to that surface. Now... This is where the fun part begins, and it's a thing that a lot of people don't know about or how to do. It's actually mapped the inner layer of that wall, as you can see, and the outer layer. If I want to change a certain part of it, I can use UV mapping, and we're going to do that in a moment. So let me just grab a, another one of these ones. So let's go to a side wall, same thing, shift, and we're going to select the wall. You'll see which wall it's selected, like that. And we're going to simply map that wall as well. Same thing. Right click, use, and you can see it's mapping that wall. See? Perfectly. 
This is how we're going to map them in a very, very simple, straightforward method. Your roof is exactly the same. You just, you can have a look at your model, the top. I'll zoom back a bit for you guys to see it. Come back over here, holding down the shift, dragging across the surface, and the roof will be selected. Now, because we're using this simple navigation system, we can go through and look for where they've got roof. Now, where have they got roof? It'll probably be, there it is, roof. And they happen to call this, if, well, let's have a look. If you're not sure, right click, open it and see if it's the right one. And then we can see it's the roof. They do call it transparency, um, but don't worry, it's not transparent. So right click, use, come back over, and we can see that one didn't map correctly. So that's not actually mapped on, on the model correctly. So we'll try again. And it's a bit of fun too, guys. If you haven't done this, you will enjoy having a, a bit of a play with this and figuring out how things work. So where is our roof again? Our roof is over uh, roof, albedo, smoothness that's the one load use and now it's mapped there we go see map perfectly i didn't need to edit that in the uv editor although i could have and that's something else i'll show you um so in a very short amount of time we've managed to do a couple of those walls let's do another one now when you're using the object builder it's dependent on the view you're looking at so this is the left side which if I just shift and highlight, we can tell that's the other side over there. But I want the opposite side. So to do that, it's really simple. I move that a fraction. View, we'll just go to back and we'll just do the same thing. Shift, drag across the faces, which is that. And look for our walls, use. And we've got another wall. And you can see how quickly, and I haven't used the UV mapping yet, guys. So I could tweak that, but I'm just showing you if you've never done a model and you want a building, this is how you're gonna do it. So I will just do the back one as well. Same thing again, that's the left side. So we wanna switch it to the right. How do we know? Simply shift, left, drag, it's the other side. So we need to spin this to the rear. Uh, to the right now we can get the other side like this and the same thing let's add our wood and you can see it's coming along beautifully now with the front one as you can see it is actually um brown on the front which i think it's meant to be and it's it's blue and wood on the inside so it looks kind of cool let's quickly do the concrete now the concrete, how do you get the concrete? Because you're seeing the roof. The simplest way, go to your 3D view, hold down shift, drag left mouse button. There's your concrete. Hidden now, they should have something in here which will be concrete. So let's have a look what they call it. Uh, window talk. Well, now, if you do get things in another language, right click, open, and simply have a look at them. So that looks like a wood. Floor, there it is. Let's have a look at the floor. Yep, it's like a concrete. Sasquask said, okay, I think I get it. Cool. A model can have more than one palm mapped to it. Yes, that is correct. You can have more mapped to it. So we'll just add the um, floor. Yeah, I'm really glad I got that text to speech thing working. Thanks, guys. Makes it easier. Um, so let's put in the floor. And. There's that, and you guys should be getting excited by now because you're seeing Grandpa throw together a model pretty quick. Um, and all we've got to add now is the windows, the doors, and these poles. How do we add the poles? Once again, pretty simple. We need to select them. So it's shift, left, drag. Look for the pole that's illuminated. But here's a good thing. If you ever do something like this, check, because occasionally they will label them down here which will make it easier for you to find them. Oops, there it is. St uh, Stolbiki. Okay, now in Adelaide, power poles are called Stolby poles. Stolby poles. I don't know if there's a connection. Sounds like there might be. 
So there's our Stolbiki. And then we go down, we look for the same thing. And come over here and check it. Ooh, looking nice. All we got now is the windows and the doors. And our building is pretty well textured. That's how quickly you can texture a actual model, guys. It's not hard at all once you do it. Um, and you can have more than one PAA mapped to uh, a surface. Using this method, you can map as many as you want and you can customize them. And I will give you a quick glimpse of that. So let's look at our door. So obviously we're on the right side. So if I do select here, I'm going to get the other side. So I need to close that and come over here and change my view to left. Now I should be able to select the door. So I look where the door is and I drag across it. It gets the whole door. Nice. And as I said, you can use down here, guys. You want an accurate way. And if the modelers have actually given you a label. Sasquosk said amazing. Thank you. <laughs> welcome. You're welcome, Sasquosh. So now we got the door. Let's add the door to it. Door. And the same thing again. We're going to use that texture on the door. Exciting, guys. And now our window is our last one that we have to do. And it looks like it does the wood on the window. So let's try that. Let's see where it is. They've probably labeled it window. And this was just a model, as we said. We we downloaded this from um, from one of the programs. Um, it was one of the websites, which was Sketchfab. So it was that one. And you see how quickly putting together something. It just, it's fun. It's fun. So load, use. To, that's the wood for there so that's that now there's a glass one now we'll put their glass one for the moment but I'm guarantee it won't work because glass in DayZ it's a special beast but it's easy to do once you've done it so let's just load and use their texture on it and that ladies and gentlemen is a fully imported model straight from what we looked at, what did we look at? This. Now, some of you guys are going, oh, the front of that's blue and that's, that's, yours isn't. True. So if we want to remap it, and I'm glad that it does that because it'll give me a chance to show you how to map in UV Mapper only quickly. I'm going to show you this. So I'm going to save it so we don't lose our progress. Keep saving, guys, whatever you do. Um, so here we go. So what are you going to do? First of all, we need to get the right view. So if we try to draw it, um, which wall has it got? That's that one there. That's good. Now, when we did go up before and we chose the walls, let's see if it, if it tries to fix it. Nope. So you can see it hasn't, hasn't textured that correctly. So this is a good example of how to fix a particular wall. So let's shift, left click, drag that surface. And now we're going to hit the UV button. So this is our UV editor, which is daunting if you never used it. It's simple once you have. So we go up to filter, texture, and we're looking for the walls. So here's our wall. Now, this is how it's trying to map all the images. Don't be confused by it and don't stress. All we need to worry about is mapping that one surface. So we're going to hit this button here. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a image of our actual wall okay so you can see the wall there that's what the wall looks like so what we want to do is we're going to drag this just like you would any image to fit the area that we want to retexture and this ladies and gentlemen is uv mapping inside of object builder in its simplest form so i've really simplified this for you guys so you can see confused by texture mapping and uv mapping this is how we do it in a simple way close that and now if we go and select our model again we now have a model that is fully textured ready to get going but i did notice a couple of minor textures 
don't know if you guys can see it. Hinges, door handle. Let's do it. Sasquatch, I need help making model config. I will do that for you, brother. Once we get through this one, I'm more than happy to help you out. Uh, okay, so now we can see that there's a couple of textures we need to add. And I guess one of them is, what is it? Rotor lock obviously is the inside roof, and I'm sure there must be a texture for that. Proto lock, there it is. See, and I'm just never done this part, so I'm just using it. To, and that will be the inside texture, which is obviously a yeah, nice finish. Thank you very much for that, um, um, Sasquatch. I will, I will definitely follow up on that. We'll, we'll get together. Maybe we do a, a next stream. We'll do it on Sasquatch. I'll show you how to do it. While we're doing it, let's share it with everybody. So there's that one done. What was the other one? The Prolock was the um, that stove keys. We know what they were. Hand must be handle. Looks like it. That's the door handle. So we must have one in here called hand. Yes. Save that one. Yep. Door handle done. And there was some hinges. I think. Don't have the hinges. Had it, but. They kind of look like they needed, those hinges need a texture. And I like getting things right. So let's have a look, um, see if there's one here. See, this is what I'm saying. You can simply click on these if a builder or modeler has done it correctly. Makes it a lot easier for you. Petley, what's Petley? Oh, hinges. Petley means hinges. There we go. Learn a new word every day. So we want to look for is perhaps something that looks like Petley. Be staring me in the eyes. Petley, there it is. And I think we're done. That's it. Our building is fully textured. Can I have a round of applause for that? Someone give me a hell yeah. Come on. Someone give me a hell yeah so I know that you're out there. Don't you make me put on the bikini and inflate my rubber swimming pool. Okay. Here we go. Let me have a sip of water. I hope you guys are, good, are doing well, and I hope you're enjoying um, wherever you are. Let's not think about Charlie Victor one niner, and let's just enjoy ourselves. Come on, somebody, give me a hell yeah! All right, so there's our model, as we can see, which is all textured. We are going to now, uh, once we've saved it, we're going to start adding just a few geometries, and this is how quick we will get it in. I will leave the glass to last so that it's transparent. But what I want to do right now is I'm going to add second most important log. Sasquask. Sid Vauray. <laughs> Sasquask. <laughs> Sid Wash Hands. Mzjoko. Sid Looking Good. Thanks. There you go. Me or the uh, thing? <laughs> yeah. What have I got? I guess this is what I should play. That plays probably doesn't on that screen. I'll do it on the other one in a sec. But anyway, that's a funny one I got. So what we're going to do now is add your geometry, guys. So uh, if you haven't modeled or you're learning to, in simple terms, geometry is anything you're going to create impact on a wall, a roof, a floor, furniture, whatever it is. This is all going to be part of your geometry lod. Now, just with a geometry lod, the only thing you've got to keep in mind that buildings have to have a couple of properties in them. So um, those, if you're looking for those guys, if you're not sure, simply go into Google and put Daisy sample building, and they'll give you a basic one, which will give you some simple information. There's some simple samples in here that you can toy with, ladders. But they actually have a page which will show you about buildings and doors and so on and so forth. So any of this stuff you need to know will be located in here. But all buildings in DayZ need to have a couple of things. In your geometry lod, because this is to get your doors working, so we will come back to this. You're going to need a class house and a map building and a damage no. Damage, no, you can get away with that, but it's best to put it in because Daisy recommends it. Let's shift that over there for the second. And we're simply going to add those. So we're going to put in our class and house. 
and then we're going to put map and I'll explain what this means map building let me explain that to you in one sec soon as my and damage no you sometimes see it written as two d two m's don't worry it works either way damage no okay so the simplicity of this is simple this class which is what the software recognize that it will be a house it'll know it as a house on the map whenever you look at the map or your terrain build or anything this is going to show up as an object as a building bushes will come up different and damage is pretty understandable it just doesn't allow the building to get damaged which in day z not like armor you can't really damage the buildings anyway which is a shame and i think they're going to change that in upcoming uh, releases of the new infusion i'm sure hoping so as we can see ladies and gentlemen we've now got our basis of that keep on saving keep on saving keep on saving whatever you do um, and as you can see my screen over there there is nothing on it so we need to come back and look at um, our model and we can see that it has a roof walls floor door and a couple of um, pylons or um, pillars so we need to create those simply and easily you can create them inside of object builder and how do you do that once you've got object builder open all you're going to do is click on the view that you want now if you're doing walls i recommend doing them from the top and you'll see why so you view from the top and you press f7 it'll bring up this just click ok don't worry about it okay you now have a box this box can be dragged around with the right mouse button like this okay so what we want to do is turn this this Scott Nelson said what about glass windows glass windows I will get to those as well because they're as I said they're a special beast and I want to I want to show you and I'll give you a sample of how to do them so now we've got a box in place we want to make this one wall and we're going to clone this which will be simple how do you do that if you press V which is basically vertice you can select one side don't worry if you don't remember it this is on video you can rewind it or you can toy with it there is even a shortcut uh, um, uh, web page as well you can get all this. So I've just selected one side of the box and all I'm doing, I'm going to move it up. So when you hit Y, in case you not realize it's Y and it's X. That's how Object Builder does it. Scott Nelson said have texture in Blender for other games, but this looks a lot more straightforward. You're correct. It is a lot more straightforward once someone teaches you how to do it now no one taught me how to do this Scott I had to work this out without any instructions at all so this was really just me sitting there figuring it out and finding hardly any information it's very very simple and I can use blender but I want to show you guys an object builder because I do believe for some people starting it's simpler so as I said I just press Y Y is always up Y is up up is just Y X X is across so just remember that <coughs> Now, same thing again. I'm going to select these two vertices. Sasquask said you can make those geometry in Blender, then import it. Sure, you can make them inside a Blender um, just as easily. Or the only thing, if I opened up Blender and I started showing people Blender, you'll open another can of worms for people where they're not used to it. But if you're used to using Blender, go ahead and use Blender because Blender will do the same thing, exactly what I'm doing. The only advantage to this that I've found is you're doing it natively in Object Builder and there's a lot less here than you would see if I turned around and I said, ladies and gentlemen, let's have some fun with Blender. And if I opened up my Blender, um, which I'll just get it for you and I'll show you what I mean. So people who have not seen Blender before, it's a free app um, for using. And as you can see, you can build objects in here and um, change them and move them and everything else so on forth and you can even export them using a special armor uh, which allows you to export them across you've got, you've got to learn all this said okay ha ha <laughs> he gets it but it is good believe me if you want to learn blender guys <clears throat> i honestly recommend going over to um even if you're experienced with blender please guys go check out this i'm not funded by them i'm not anything i don't get any royalties but if you look at gamedev.tv and you check out their blender tutorial they actually have a 
the best blender for beginners tutorial you will ever find anywhere on the net. This complete blender's creator 2.8, which is relative to all the other ones, Rick Davidson is a legend. I worked through some of this to see what I could learn, and he's really good. The damn course is cheap. I mean, look at it, 13 bucks, 13 bucks. My, they were normally $195 when I got it. So check it out. Uh, shout out to Greg Davison. That'll teach you guys. Anyway, back to the the job at hand. Um, got to keep pressing Scott the window. Nelson said, oh, yeah, Blender is a tool for 10,000 things beyond game assets. Correct. Correct. Let's see. Scott's obviously had a bit of experience in that. And he knows and he's familiar with some of the, the stuff. But to keep it simple for you guys who just uh, want a mod, um, this is designed for that. But if you are a modder and you've used Object Builder before, you'll probably pick a few things up that you may not have seen done before. Um, you may have, you may not, but I'm just trying to share it for you guys. So as you guys can see, we've created basically a simple wall. Okay. And all we're going to do for our geometry, we're going to copy that. Control C, Control V, which is just paste. And then we're just going to drag it. Oops, got to drag it down on the Y. Y is up and down. I don't know. It just is. Drag it down. And we're going to put this where the other wall will be. And you can see, if you don't see these, the LOD outline from your first LOD, then you need to go into your options and then look through and click View background LOD and that will give you the uh, this view of the first LOD so you can see what you're working with so there we go uh, I will turn on next time my shortcut key on screen thing so you guys can see what buttons I'm pressing for the meantime I'll tell you um, there we go we've got another wall and that's two walls created and obviously we need another wall on over this side over on the left so we'll do the same thing C V drag it down and all we're going to do is go up to this nifty little easy to rotate 2d tool hence the reason object builder is easier for a lot of people um, and we're just going to tell it 90 degrees now remember whenever you're rotating it's going to rotate according to the viewport you're looking at now this black line means i'm looking at this top view so i've got to make sure i'm in the right view put in the number and hit preview there it is click ok and i want to move it on the x which is over left and right and we can see this is how you do it now your geometry in case you guys are wondering your geometry doesn't have to be exactly the way you know like a model it just has to be a very close approximation to what you're going to bump into if you walk into a wall or if there's a table or anything else like that so uh, you can always view it over in your viewport. Let me just ref yes, ref refresh my viewport because it rains <laughs> in Object Builder. <laughs> um, drives you nuts, Daisy. So I wish they could just turn that off. So as you can see, those three walls, and you can see how quick you knock this up. It's not, this isn't rocket science and it's great for anybody. I've done models in Blender and I've done models in Object Builder and I've done the same quality just using this. Sometimes I get lazy and I just use Object Builder. Now the same thing for the front wall. So we're going to select that. So if, if I want to select the object, this square, I click O and then I just drag on it and there it is. I'm going to copy, Control C, Control V, and I'm going to drag it across on the X position like that. And as you can see, all I'm doing, looking at these viewports, is seeing how well I've got it lined up. So you can see that's pretty well, that's pretty well in the parameters of workability. And obviously I want to speed this up so I don't take too long for you guys. So now what we've really got here is just a box, which is great because what we're going to do is we're going to make a doorway so here's my trick guys when you're going to do a doorway or anything like that say for example you're trying to create a door but you've got all this confusion and you're like where does it go and i don't know and very very simple come back to your main uh lod 
if you've got a door already allocated, which you should have, if not, you just choose the door and then you right click and hit redefine. And that'll create a door. So we've got a door. I'm just going to copy it, control C, paste it, control V. And now we can see it's temporarily in our view LOD, but the reason that uh, the geometry LOD, what I want to do is I want to make this wall meet up with the edges of there so that when I put the door in, geometry door has to be a simple square that it matches up. So all we'll do, I will just try and get, um, I'll just hit that. Let me just go V, which is a vertice. Vertice. And I'll just zoom in and then we'll just select the other one. So now we've got the top section. And what am I going to do? I am going to drag that down on the Y. If you ever want to zoom in on what you're doing, press C and then space. And that'll zoom into the spot you want to be. We'll just drag it up to where we can see the door begins. So we see the door begins over there. Now remember geometry, you don't have to be exact. You don't have to be exact, but you want the doors to overlap the uh, actual image. So we will just put that one there and we've created our first section of wall, which is right next to the door. And because if you have two screens like I have, um, you guys can also uh, work by glancing across to the other screen, which is kind of handy if you want to get things really accurate. You can sit there and just tweak them. If you don't have two screens, you only have one, don't fret. You can alt tab in between or add a mouse shortcut button that lets you alt tab. It's a little handy tip. Press O, which is object. I'm going to choose the whole object now and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it and I'm going to just right click and drag it up again. And as I said, Farrell Cash said the HUD has color thumbs up sign. <laughs> Thank you. So all, all I'm doing here is I'm just duplicating that wall. I'm going to press V. There's a couple of shortcuts I'll tell you guys. I write them down on a little piece of paper like this, which I don't look at anymore. But this little piece of paper tells me O, whole object. See, in the middle of the word whole is a big O. <laughs> v for vertice. P, a T for polys. Z for zoom. And P for flatten. And that's how you can create a little, you know, stick on shortcuts. Just put them on your thing. You'll glance at them the first few times, then you'll get used to it. You won't even look at them again. But they're handy to have and they take five seconds and no more Googling, which is great. So we will move this up here. Once again, C for center, V for centering and then zooming in. We just use the mouse wheel. And we can see that's like that. So when we come back and look at our actual 3D view over here, you can see we've created all of that. That's looking pretty good. Now let's go back and have a look where our door was. So if we select door, C and V, there's our door. Now we want to build a door uh, that encompasses this area. It's pretty important with a lot of models. You need to encompass it. So all I'm going to do is press O, object, remember, whole O has in the middle, and I copy, paste, and I'm just going to drag this up here, like that. And because I'm just dragging it in the Y uh, direction, it's not dragging it out of alignment, and I'm using a top view. So V, I'm going to press my V for vertices again. Press control, I can select both those and I drag that down and then just C and V if I want to zoom right in to make sure I've encompassed the actual door, which we can see I've encompassed it nicely there. So that's our door made. Now what we do is we want to remove the one we took from the original image and what we want to do is we want to redefine that. Now the reason you need to define a door is for it to work. Daisy needs to know that a door is labeled a specific way. If you're confused, be sure to check out, just Google it, the Daisy um, uh, doors. Just Google that, you'll find it. It'll come up with this, buildings. 
and you'll find that it'll tell you here exactly what you need to name things. So there is three major things you have to build, a resolution LUD, geometry LUD, and a memory LUD. And then you just got to name them, door one, door two, door three, and we will do that right now. So we need to rename this. So first of all, let's just create a new one. Call it door one. I stick to case sensitive myself. Now, once it's highlighted, you just right click, hit redefine. And that door now is defined. I'll delete that one because we don't need that one. Quask said, I need to go sleep work tomorrow. Maybe on the weekend, we can make that vote config. Sounds good, Please. Sasquatch. No worries at all, brother. All. Cheers, brother. You Sasquask have a great one. Said thumbs up sign. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the thumbs up. All right, so now you can see all we've done in our geometry. We've just created this section here, which is where our door is going to be and our walls. And this is probably the most detailed section you're going to have to look at because once you've done this, everything else works. We can have this in model and running in next to no time once we've done things after this. So let's have a look at our door just quickly. There's our door. Let's look at this view. And I can see that the door is a bit tall. So all I'm going to do is reduce the size of the door. So I'm just going to press the V key and select the top vertice and control and the other vertice. And I'm just going to drag it down. So it matches the height of the, the door and it slightly encompasses it just so the doors work. There we go. There's our door like such. Now, for a lot of you people, you might be saying, um, oh, you've got a gap at the top. You can fill that in. There's no greater need because no one's going to jump over there when there's a roof on top. <laughs> it's not going to be any great problem at this point in time. So here we go again. What are we going to create this time? Let's create the uh, two poles down here. Once again, make sure your black square is highlighted on the view you're on. Like you can see when you right click, it highlights. And all we do, press F7, create a, what they call a primitive. This is just a square. And what you're going to see me do here now is just simply reduce it to the size I want. How do you reduce? Control, a shift and control. And these shortcuts, I'll give you a link to all these uh, where they're all on the DAISY information site where you can, you can get used to using these. Don't worry if you don't understand. You can always go up and look through um, different things here and see what what the different shortcut keys are. Um, like we said, object, O, select faces, F3, vertices, uh, textures, whatever. It's all in here. So if you're not sure, guys, you can always look uh, and you can create your own, which will make it simple. So all I'm doing is I'm positioning it in the vertical view, the top view, like that. And I'm just going to make sure it sits down to the size I want it. And that looks pretty good. So that looks good. Now, if you've looked over here or anywhere else, you'll notice that it's not big enough. That's easy. We find another view. And all I'm going to do is press the V key, which will give me the vertices. So I just want to grab the bottom. Okay. And I'm just going to drag that down. Boompa, like that. And then go back and we should have one pylon or created or support, whatever you want to call it. And because we've created one, we can select that one. And then if we copy, paste, and then we move it across in the X, we can drop the next one right where it belongs without too much bus. There's our two poles. So that's our poles. Let's jump on. Shall we do the roof? I guess roof sounds good to me. So let's get our roof done. Now the roof one, a couple of ways you could look at it top down or the side view. So let's work with the side view. F7, build a cube. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit. So I can press shift and control and that'll let me drag it. I want to drag it down that way and we'll position it 
just above where it is and why before I do that I'll show you what I do press V which is going to allow us to choose a vertice a vertice is one of these points okay so I want to select this one and I want to select this one so in order to do that I just click control now what that's done is it's allowed me to select that one side all I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I don't have X or Y selected. I'm just going to drag this, this to where the roof is. And I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to drag this down to where I want it to be. And you can see it's already starting to take the right shape. Um, now what I'll do is because we're, we're just selecting vertices, I'm going to just drag this See, the good thing about geometry, guys, is it doesn't have to match the um, perfectly. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're not going to see this. It's just if you're walking on it and stuff. So there's our one view there. But the thing is, if we look on top, we can see, or we look here, it's only just a pole. We need to drag that across. So to do that, really simple. We're going to come down to this view. And we're going to attempt to select that side so we're just going to select the vertices and we're going to select those vertices and then we're going to just drag them in the x direction which is that way as you can see that's in the x direction and if we look we can now see we're getting a roof on top wonderful and you'll find that your Geometry lines are probably the one that you're going to spend a little bit of time on, but it's important you get them right so that in game they function correctly and people don't walk through walls, etc. etc. So now we've created that one there. We can um, actually, here's a good trick with you guys I recommend. If you ever want to label these, simply select the object and you can create a name for it and call it, say, roof. In this case roof one and now if you're ever trying to select something you can simply click on it and know where it is so there's our roof first part of our roof done let's create a second roof and because i tend to get a bit pedantic what i'm going to do is just have a nice peek on these corners here just to see how much i got them in to match so we'll press c and v which allow me to zoom in and um, yeah, it's all right like i said it doesn't have to be perfect it's just a sample, but you guys can toy with this once I give you the model anyway, so you can mess with it all you want. So we want to create another uh, one on the other side. If I don't want to do all the work, I can select that, copy, paste, and literally just drag it over here. And then by selecting the vertices, I can just drag them into where I want them. This is the quick and rough way to do it, but it will work. Believe me, no one will ever know you did it this way unless you tell them. So, and then if I want to just clean up these vertices for my own sake, not that it'll make much of a difference, I can just drag them like that. And there is our roof, which means once we do a couple things, that will be a roof you can walk on. Last thing, we got our floor, guys. We've got to get a floor on this place. So I'll use this view another f7 drop myself a box put it down where i want it so i'll look at the lowest point looks about there choose a vertice x is that way and that way y is y is up up it just is so we'll drag it across and we'll do the same here and we'll choose y y is up and down up and down don't know it just is and we'll just drag that up to there and see in space and we get a good look at it make sure we get it nice and clean i think that's pretty good should have now floor but as you can see the floor is not wide enough so we've got to widen that just to encompass the actual model so to do that once again i'm just going to choose the object move for object and all i'm going to do is I'm going to drag a little way I try to do it sometimes. So I'll press the V 
to select them and then I'll drag one side across to where I encompass the say the concrete and now it's easy to grab the other end and just drag it across and drop it in place and that is pretty well the geometry you'll need you could put an inner roof on it if you wanted to um, but for the sake of this argument if you guys want to do that I don't believe anyone will get over the top of that so it's not really important um, most important part now is that we save it well guys how are we all doing i hope everybody's having a bit of fun um any questions that's what grandpa's here for anything you want to fire at me feel free to ask me any questions at all because i'm more than happy to answer those questions right let's get into the next phase of doing the um the actual mapping hope you guys are getting the right view over there let me just check it i hate having to do this but i gotta show you guys yep Yep, you guys will be getting it. Let me have a look. It's kind of crazy that um, this thing, it's a great app, but every time you click off the link, you got to reconnect it. Otherwise, I don't hear your chats come through. But I realize now, just minimize it. It works. So what are we going to do with this? Now, before we go any further, all geometry, all geometry, every building, in order for a building to have some kind of impact, it's got to have a weight. So to add a weight or a mass, make sure that you've got your mass selected here or alt M to turn it off or on now the minimum mass you can have on an object is 150 okay anything below that it probably won't work so a lot of people do this they select the whole model and then they just throw in a huge number like 3000 and they apply it and then they go that should be right. Now, generally, that's pretty good, unless there's a lot of parts in a model. If we look at uh, that one there, it's 272. Look at that one there, it's 545. So you want to make sure that all of these exceed 150. If they do, you're home and hose. My treehouse was a lot more complicated that I had to individually add weights to stuff because some objects were small. Apart from that, that's a very quick and nasty way to do things that will work perfectly for you so don't don't stress about it guys let me grab a nice refreshing cold water all right so as we've said we're getting through this pretty quick now we have let's have a look recap here is our textured building as you can see and We'll get to doors and windows last. We get our geometry, which means anything we run into. And on all geometry, you must have these three. And the doors must be listed as particularly door one. If you're not sure, just go check out the Daisy community thing. It'll tell you here what you must have listed. So we are going to now need a couple of other things. And that is going to be our memory. What is a memory? Scott oh. Nelson said, what is mass in game on a practical level? Mass on a game in practical level would be um, funny kind of normally in a game, a mass means it's sheer weight of what it weighs, if it's impacted or um, if you had to push something or if it's a vehicle or if it's oh, a wheel or if it's an object you've got to carry in your backpack. Mass normally pertains to that purpose. In the building area, the mass has to pertain to basically the weight of that item, but it more equates to, how do I put it, if the object is dense and whether you can hit it. Now, that really goes from anything below 150. It's probably not going to work properly. Anything above that will. Is it crucial you make objects set weights? I don't think so. I've tried. It's, it's really not important in object builder for houses. Different when you're doing other things, maybe if you're doing AI, you're doing objects, certain things have to have a set scripted mass and stuff. But apart from that, it's not really crucial to long answer short. So memory points. Now, memory points, guys, are really, really important. If you're going to create doors and you can't get them to work, it's probably because you didn't create three separate memory uh, points, okay? Okay. So what are they? They're very, very simple. Obviously, every door has to have a label. So 
door one, because we've got one door in this. If you saw my prison, it's got 64 Scott doors. Nelson said gotcha. So more of an issue with carried objects, not so much for buildings. I just got your message. Yeah, that's correct. Not with buildings. It doesn't matter as much. So door one. Thanks, Scott, for that question too. Door one. We've labelled. Now, we're going to build these first before we add the points. These are easy. Memory points are awesome, guys. You'll love it. So, we're going to create another one. As we know, it has to be door one action. And always keep to the same case sensitive. So, it's door, capital, lower, lower D, door one, underscore action. And I'll explain what those are for you in one sec. And the last one you're going to put in is your door one axes. You're probably guessing what that is. So door one will be the door handle you look at, but it refers to the door. Door one action is where the sound comes from. That's what they use, and it, for whatever reason. And door one axes will basically be your hinge point on a door. Doesn't matter whether it's a sliding door or a swinging door or a hatch. The axes will all be the axes of where it moves, whether it's along a track or that rotates on a point. Very simple, don't be confused because I'll give you these files, you can you can mess with them. So as you can see over here in our memory lods, they give you a sample of what you're supposed to establish and all the rest of that. So to make it simple for you guys, because uh, you won't see anything if I show you my preview screen because memory lods don't have any, any image. So what are we gonna do? Well, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we establish where the door is. My workaround is always go back to the original, select door, copy it, control C, go back into memory, control V, and you're going to delete that anyway. Okay. This is just so that you can figure Farrell out Cash where it is. Said, are you doing a DLC? A DLC on this one? Uh, this is going to be open source. So anybody who uses this, the only thing I request is that guys to um, include the the copyright for the original person that's it you can do whatever you like with this um, that's what you mean hope you do so there's our door there we want to add our hinges to it how do we add our hinges it's really simple if you go to top view so we go in our top view and we look down generally sometimes we, even without the door you can see where hinges would be uh, it depends on on the the thing but you can kind of see well I can see the hinges so there's a hinge which is kind of a really cool way of doing it so you find out where a hinge is and you press the insert key and that will drop in a a point which will be your first memory point and all we do is we just want to move this one up so I'll show you over here we're going to move this one up and it doesn't have to be where the hinge is. It only has to be roughly where it is because as long as they're spaced, it'll rotate on those two points. So it's not a mechanical issue. You don't have to worry. Control C, Control V, create a second one because you'll need two. You always need two points for your axes. And now we've created two axes or hinge points. You just select them, right click, redefine, and now you'll find what you've done is you've now established your door axes. That's how easy it is. Once you do this a few dozen times, it becomes second nature. So don't worry. Let's create an action, which is where the sound will emit from. You can make the sound emit from anywhere. And in this case, I'm going to choose roughly the center of the door or above. It doesn't. This isn't crucial as long as you put it where you want the sound to play. Too far away, you're not going to hear it. So I'm going to make the door sound, yeah, I usually make them in about the middle. That's how Daisy like this, but it's not important. It's highlighted. Right click. And I'm going to redefine it. So now, door one action and the axes. And the last memory point is where you're going to open the door from. Which we know, obviously, is going to be up here. Holding down control and moving your mouse will allow you to move the actual image down all these shortcuts i'll give you that link insert another point and using my different viewports i'm going to drag that now you can see where well, you got to be careful see how i had selected my other um ones over there so i've got to be careful i don't move them 
CNV if I want to center and view. Look for the door handle. Move it roughly where it is. That's where you're going to glance in order to open a door handle. And we're going to redefine that as door one. And we make sure we haven't messed anything else up. Let's have a look. Let's have a look and see. Um, so door one, correct. Leave that one out. Door one action, door one axes. That's it. They're defined. Save. And now we've created our door area. Now let's just go back to our geometry really quickly, guys. I'm going to minimize that page for you so you can see what I'm doing. This is our door. What we do want to do, and this is really important, guys, whenever you create doors or anything as such, you have to always make them components. It's very simple. Your structures, topology, find components, and it just adds them. So each one of these is going to reference to a wall or whatever else, so on and so forth. Really, really simple. That's all you need to do. And we've now defined all of our components in here. You don't need to do that in a, in a view LOD. It's not necessary. Um, there are a couple, two exceptions, but you won't generally ever do that. Um, it just makes it messy and hard to find what you're after. But your geometry LOD always has to have that defined. And so does your view LOD. View, view, <laughs> tree LOD. <laughs> so we have a look here and we have a look at what they've pasted here. Resolution LOD. Right, geometry LUD, and you can see there's the components I just mentioned. These are the properties. And then lastly, you can see in our memory LUD, we've created those. And let's just have a look and see. And there's a memory LUD. Now, the next few we're going to do have a purpose in DayZ. One of them is going to be your uh, view geometry. It's very, very simple. View geometry is what a zombie can and cannot see through. So it's most important that you do create a view geometry so that um, it will work without it, but you need to have one if you want to do it correctly. The simplest way to do it, guys, is simply go back, copy, select all of your model, copy, and then what you want to do is, now, if you try to paste it across, you can have all that weight. So it's very simple. If I just paste it back in there, make that zero, apply, and then cut all that out and then drop it into my view geometry, you see I've created my view geometry. Now with the windows, if you want zombies to see through windows, obviously you have to carve these out as well. And you might want to do this when I give you the sample file. So if you do want to mess with it, feel free. Um, it is very easy to carve windows out. You just take this wall here, you reduce it in size, and you copy it, paste another one up, and just make a few blocks to fill in that area. I have tried several ways to, what they call boolean cutting, boolean cutting, where you can cut things out. Object Builder, no matter what I do, will not cut holes through objects. It's not powerful enough to do that with any way that I've tried tried <laughs> trust me trust me i've tried now by copying the geometry over to the view geometry we've also kept the labels door one and we've kept the components which is important for it to function the next one we're going to need is we're going to need our fire geometry so our fire geometry is what sound it makes when an object is hit a building a window a glass concrete dirt you know whatever because it was still in the clipboard, I'm just going to paste it in there. And we've got all of that in there as well now. And uh, ABS, always be saving. Like that. Let me have another sip of water. Now, how are you guys doing? I hope that um, Charlie Victor 19's um, not bothering you guys too much. I'm doing my best to avoid it. All right. See how quickly we can churn through this. As I said, I would probably do this in a much faster fashion, but obviously I'm demonstrating to you guys. So I want you to, to grasp exactly what is happening as Grandpa does it. Um, all right, so <coughs> that's not Charlie Victor. 
All right, so here we go. Um, there's our doors, everything else like that. Now, what are we going to need to do? Not take a break right now as much as I'd like to. Would you, if you want to take a 10 minute break, please give me a shout out and we will take a 10 minute break if you want. If not, um, I will keep going. So just call that if you need to take a break for 10 minutes. If not, I will keep this running because I know we've got a few viewers at the moment. So there's the basis of our building. What's left to be done? So our, our basic LOD at the moment is all viewable. As we can see, it's all textured. We'll leave the glass to last. Our geometry LOD is all weighted, ready to go. Can't jump over things. Everything's there. You can walk on stuff. Memory LOD has the LODs, which you won't see, which are for your doors. The view geometry is what the zombies can, can and can't see through. So it protects you from those things. Fire geometry of what's going to happen when you hit stuff. And there is one more as well, which is called a roadway. And the roadway works in a couple of ways. But one of the things that it does, it will produce the sounds when you walk on certain things. And you can also set paths and things as well. So what we'll do here is all we're going to do is create a uh, flat plane. So it's not going to be a cube, a box or anything else. You could, but you don't need to. It's just a flat plane. And all we really need on this is going to be the roof, which will be like, say, tin or wood. And this will be, say, concrete. And this will be exterior. This will be interior. So all we need to do is create ourselves a simple square shape the simple way to do it is go create choose a plane it'll ask you for a size you don't have to stress about that you can just click ok and we can just drag it to where we want it to be now this is going to have two surfaces so let's go back and look it's going to have a concrete what looks like a con is that a concrete yeah, I'll say that's sort of, sort of a hard concrete and it's going to have an interior concrete and it's going to have, it looks like a wood roof. So we know if you walk on any of those paths, you're going to have an external concrete sound, an internal concrete sound and a wooden roof sound. So exterior roof, pretty easy to do. Don't be daunted by it. It's really, really simple. So go on our roadway and all we're going to do is first thing, we're going to create our uh, external concrete. Because it's a flat, it doesn't need to have any 3D to it. All we're going to do is we're going to just make sure that our um, our vertices are selected. So hit V, drag it to encompass the area that you can walk on. So all I'm doing here is doing a rough thing like that. And then I'm going to drag it downwards. Y up and down, just because Y is up and down. Pull it across like that. And the same thing again. And you can see that when we look at this view, this view, it looks fine, but obviously it hasn't encompassed the whole concrete area. So same thing again, just select those two vertices. We're in X, which is X, drag it like that. And we'll drag this one out a little bit as well, just to be sure. I want to make sure it encompasses the concrete. And here's where your four views are handy because you can just use each view to get a rough idea where the concrete is. Scott Nelson said was wondering about footstep sounds. Mm -hmm. This is so cool. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you like this. As I said, Scott, a lot of people think this is hard to do. Yes, if you've never been taught, if no one gives you instructions, it's hard. This is how we do our footstep sounds. This is how we create the all that different thing so we've just created one surface right there uh, you could give it a name you could create an object and say um, external you know cement if you want if you want to be organized always be organized if you can now if we want to create another one we can copy paste and simply drag this up to where the internal sound will be and do the same thing again just stretch it out to reach where it's going to be like that it doesn't have to be perfect, guys, because you as soon as you step on it, it's going to make the noise anyway. So um, most important part is that it's at the level and not below. So you want to leave it at the level or roughly. You can even float it a little bit if you want. It doesn't mind being floated. 
but you don't want it sunk underneath an object because sometimes they don't work, but you'll know that when you test it. So there's our two floor surfaces and let's do our roof surface. Uh, so with our roof surface, same thing again, we're just going to create a plane. Uh, I can show you a simple way of drawing an object. If you are curious, guys, there is a way of drawing an object. I don't want to get advanced, but I will show you this simple method for anyone who has a little bit of knowledge of this. You can create an actual shape by clicking the insert buttons and dropping points where they belong. Okay, so you can literally just drop points in. Now we're doing a side view there. And all, all I have to do now, if I copy and paste those and then drag them across, I was supposed to say X, but it didn't. Now, if we do look at this view here, you can see there's a bunch of floating points. We can join those together very, very quickly if we wanted to. And this is something that I discovered, which I sometimes I use it. It's kind of cool. So all you do is you select all the points that you want to join like this. And you go up to faces and draw faces, draw faces, draw. <laughs> and then we go um, polygon. And then you can select on each one like that. And that will actually draw that shape, right? So you guys saw it now from the top. You can see that it's transparent. If that is the case, just press W. It will reverse it and you'll have the surface at the top. So you saw how quickly you can create a very complex shape just by dropping down the points, I and S, insert, and that. So that's how I created the roof that way. Or you could do it the way I showed you before. Um, now in DayZ, another little thing too that you'll find is whenever you're creating things, sometimes it'll cross them. That's important if you're doing certain LODs that you do cross them because it it creates faces and it it's efficiency and all the rest of that. But we'll do that for another time because I want you guys to enjoy this and, and get a drift for what we're doing. So what have we done here? We've created three surfaces a roof wood, a, a ground um, external concrete, and a ground internal cement. How do I know it's that? As we browse back and we sort of go in and zoom, we kind of get an idea, well, that's got to be wood. Could be could be metal if you want to do. Like you could that, make that a metal. It's up to you. You can change these. That's a concrete we can see down there. Um, and then obviously the in interior one, so many awkward buttons for this. Yeah, that's an interior concrete. So there we go. So we're going to add those to it, which is so easy, guys. So easy. Let me show you after I have another sip of this water. Keep hydrating. Got to hit that total gym tonight. So I'm going to get my creatine into me and my, uh, get my, get, get swole. We're getting swole. All right. So what are we doing? We're going back to our uh, roadway. We're going to add sounds to these, which is surprisingly very simplistic to do. Um, you'd be quite amazed at this. We choose the object we want to add a sound to. For example, um, in this case, we know that this one is an exterior concrete. That one there. Okay. Now, here's where this little tool if you haven't got it enabled, be sure that you turn it on through Windows and Resource Library. Okay. If it's not turned on, turn it on and double clicking it will let you drag it to where you want. And then you can put it where it is. If you double click and you drag the sides, you can enlarge to whatever size you want. Once it's there, put it in position. Once you've got your layout saved, you'll be able to use it every time you come back and use Object Builder in it. The layout you see I use, I just come up with it and I find it it's nice and flowing. Okay. Scott so, Zilson said yes, roof Scott. material determines raindrop sounds. Yes. Or sound of impact by anything else. Uh, well, Woods. anything at all. So whatever that surface is, if it's a metal, if it's a wood, if it's a concrete, 
whatever sounds affect that, footsteps, concrete, um, rain, all those will be pertinent to what we're about to do here. So it's pretty cool. So to add a sound to it, you want to select the whole object. So pressing the O key will let you select it. So we'll go O. Now, you only want to select the one that you need. You don't want to select all of them, just the one you want to save as an external, which I'm doing. We'll do that. Go into your whole library. And if you've used Makiro's guys, you should use Makiro's to extract Daisy to P. That's how you get all these files. Go into the DZ folder. Go into the uh, surfaces, data. And here it is here roadway. And if we look, we can see that there's different sounds. So we look through the sounds here and we can see concrete internal, concrete external, right? So if we open that, it's only going to come up like this little exterior baton. It won't, it'll seem like an image, it's not. This is scripted and connected with the DAISY engine. So the good thing is, once you've selected your surface and you right click and choose load use, you'll notice it adds the sound to that particular object. Okay. So whatever the sounds are, they're going to appear when you do it. Now you can do that um, with each one of these as you work through each one. So if it's internal, load use. And the same one with the roof. You're seeing how quick we can do this, guys. Like it, this, this isn't that hard. Let's make the roof like a metal thin external. Okay. And there we go. We have now added. Sometimes they won't show an image on the top, but that's okay as long as you've loaded it up. Some will, some won't, but don't stress. It will change colors up there. So if I go metal stairs interior and I go load use, some of them do actually have an image. Some of them don't, but don't stress as long as you've selected it. So we'll go metal, thin exterior, because I want it to be a tin roof. Load use. And there we go. We've now got those all saved. So it's fun. Like I said, with this sample file, you can do whatever you want. Just make sure you do the common creative rights and add it to the... Uh, to the um, whenever you share it or use it or whatever else, because they deserve um, the rights to be able to to know that they've done something good. All right, so view geometry, fire geometry, and our roadway. So each one of these, I might have actually just gone ahead of myself on that one there. Yeah, so the roadway is there. <laughs> You've also got a terrain folder as well, guys, which is, well, do that in a further lesson where you understand how to make sounds happen and so on and so forth. So I won't confuse you for the moment. So in here, there's also, um, you'll get a couple other sounds as well, vehicles, weapons, characters. We won't get into those today, but also in your surfaces, you get surfaces bliss. So you've also got um, sounds which are different for um, Livonia. So, but I don't ever use them. I just stick to what I know. And that's those there. All right, let's double check our work. There is our model. There is our geometry. There's our memory, which you won't see anything on that screen. There's our view geometry. Road geometry. And our fire geometry. We're going to stitch all these together as well, because each one of these surfaces can have a different impact sound as well. So if you want to add a sound to a particular wall, you can do that as well. And um, let me just check something for a second, guys. All right. Um, looking pretty good. So I will just show you something really quickly so you can see a sample of a fully done model and you'll see what I've done when I do a particular model. So um, where is it? Look up to my tree house. Actually, we're going to do some work on this week because a few people asked me to do some changes and everything else, so I will actually do it. So here is my treehouse model. If I close that down over there, I can show you. And I'm doing this because I want to show you what a fully functioning model looks like when it's completed. 
and you'll see the comparison of what I've done and what we're doing. So there's the tree house, as you can see. Um, and this is the first lot. Then we've got our geometry lots. As I explained before, things you can run into impact. Doesn't have to be detailed. Notice stairs are really just ramps. You can make them stairs, but you don't need to if you just make them straight ramps. The guardrails so people don't fall off, um, so on and so forth. And memory lods, I've got a bunch of memory lods if you look over here, which are all for the different doors and ladders and stuff like that. Roadway, as we explained before, we've said this before about the sounds that it makes. So I've got different sounds on mine. There's an there's actually an interior sound here. See this one here? This is an interior sound. Roadway, wood, parquetry, interior. And then obviously we've got an external sound, which is this one, which is a road wood, a wood parquetry external. And then these stair, these rails probably have a different sound, which they do. They're planks. Some of them are planks. Some of them don't have sounds because they don't require it. And there's another wood one over here. There's a building over here. And this has parquetry as well. And then we have our fire geometry. And here's our fire geometry I was telling you about, guys. Things that we're going to shoot. Things that are going to have different sounds and, and whatever and so forth. So when we look at the model, we can see there's different colors. Let's take the roof, for example. Take the roof there. Let's have a look. And we can see that the material is a RV mat and it's lo located in the penetration. So get your minds out of the gutters, guys. This is what, if you shoot it, the penetration will refer to what sound. And they're so easy to stitch together. But they're not added as an image, they're added as an RV mat. And they're very simple because Daisy have already got them all set in their folders, ready to play with. So you'll have all your fun. So as you've seen, pretty much the same as the other model, um, except this is a lot more detailed. And you will notice glass, which we will get to last of all. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, you're awesome. You're a legend. <laughs> so, all right. So let's go back and have a look at our model at hand and see, see what we got. Make sure everything's good over here. Yep, everything's good. Yep, we're all still rocking and rolling. Um, and I'll just go back because every time I do that, this stupid program makes you restart, which is all right. I don't mind it. It's just if you talk, I can hear you without having to have that screen visible. Otherwise, I can't see things. So let's go and have a look back at our model and always be saving ABS, ABS, ABS. We're going to go into our fire geometry which is here and we're going to just add whatever sound we want so let's start with the concrete on the bottom same thing again guys if you haven't got this opened make sure you go windows and then you go to the resource library choose whole library look through for the DZ folder and look down until you see, you will see one that says sounds. But go down until you see the one that actually is the penetration folder. So structures. Or is it? Sorry. I've even forgotten myself. It's in here. Sound structures. Um, surfaces. Data. Um, seniors moment data okay it's in. underscore bmx but uh, the tree house looks amazing thank you thank you so much it is on steam if you want to put it on your map everything else like that i will do updates in kit form soon so just to rehash on that if you're looking for the penetration stuff for your bullets dz data data penetration and there it is guys these are all the different sounds you can add these RV mats are what you want. So we're going to go with the concrete first. So concrete RV mat. I've highlighted the concrete. Right click. Load use. And now if I press E, we'll notice that it's added that sound automatically. 
ever curious to know about a sound or anything else like that, the good thing about using this um, resources tab, you can double click, open it and actually have a look and see what's in there. Now, some of these like these are a sound one. They're tied in with a script, so they won't really have anything you can look at. Scott Nelson said, yes, very impressive. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. So as you can see now, oops, I should bring up that over on the other screen because I want you to see what it looks like on our reviewer, which is over there. So you can see it'll change the color of it and that color will indicate what sound it is. Um, and that's your penetration one. Let's go to the roof. So we'll look at the roof. We might as well grab both the roofs because they're all the same. So we'll make those. What did we make it before? I think we made it metal, didn't we? Thin metal. We did make a thin metal. So with your metals, You'll have different platings, armor, cast iron. If you look down through it, you'll notice there's a metal plate fence, metal plate. We'll use that one. You can always change this if you're not happy with it. You can always change that at a later date. And we've now added the sound of the roof if you shoot it. And let's just go and take a peek at our model again. And we'll say, Let's make, obviously it's all wood. I think these are all wood. Yeah, wood, 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 wood. And we'll leave glass to last. So let's go back, choose our fire geometry. And we will choose those ones. Choose that one, that one. I'm just pressing control if I want to select two. I just hold control down. So in case you're not sure, let's do wood. This will be a wood sound so that when you shoot those. And then of course, all of our uh, building itself is made of wood anyway. So we can select all of our, our building walls. Pretty simple, I'm just pressing control. If I wanna add glass, I will show you how to do that. But let's have a look. We've selected all of our wood. And we'll have a look here again, and we'll go wood, use select back here, and we've simply added all of the penetration sounds required for that model. We are so close now. We are so close. Woo. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Give me a shout out if you are. All right. So great to see you new guys on here. If you haven't joined the discord, um, as I just take a stretch, sorry guys. Grandpa is a grandpa, by the way. I guess my grandson's probably watching, but he's sitting there in the shadows and not saying hello. Hello, grandson, ghost. Stalking me. I don't know if you are, but you're probably not going to respond. <laughs> so, oh, that, that went crack. So, <clears throat> to recap, brought a model in from this Sketchfab, which was free. And it's obviously got the um, CC at Creative Commons attribu attribution. So we'll put that in there. Please, guys, make sure you do that. You share it because that's important. Then all we did was once we created, uh, brought the model Scott in, we Nelson added the textures. Said yes, absolutely. Marlon so underscore BMX <laughs> said, I don't make maps. I just play DayZ on console. I'm enjoying your stream. Thanks. Thanks for sharing your skills. Ah, oh, more than happy Imagine to. playing on a map based on a place in Australia. Did, <laughs> did he just say imagine playing a, a map on a place in Australia? All right, let's take a two-minute break and let's have a look at what it looks like in Australia, shall we? Okay, guys, if you don't know or you're not aware, um, I have been working on a map for close to 18 months, and it is a place in Australia called Rosebud. Rosebud is a place on the southern part of Victoria. It's a beachside town. It's a town I grew up in, which I don't live in anymore. I live Marlo in Queensland. BMX. Said, oh my God. <laughs> I knew you would. Um, so I used to grow up down in, in that area, and I love the place so much I decided to build a map based upon it. So what you guys will see right now is... Grandma's, grandpa's, grandpa and grandma, grandma's, little grandma's working on this with me. Until a computer blew up the other day. What you're seeing here, guys, is a sneak preview of 
I think, most awesome map. It's Rosebud Victoria, based on the whole part of the Mornington Peninsula. It's beaches. It's um, it's rural. It's got everything. And I've actually got the rights from certain places to use them in the game. Example, the Dramana Drive-In, which I wasted a lot of youth. Um, I spoke to Paul Whitaker. Shout out to Paul. Thank you so much. He's given me full permission to use all of his branding. And I've used Google Maps, Object Builder, Daisy, Terrain Builder, all that, to build my own map, including my own custom eucalyptus trees to make a Lagozzi. So you guys, if you haven't seen it, you're going to see Grandpa's little thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Th said hi. Hey, good to see you here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to Rosebud Victoria. This is the Dramana Drive. Said when will Rosebud go live, you think? I think it's going to be live um, pretty soon. I've just got a few more mappings to do. Grandma's um, computer died, the new one that we got. There's the Dramana Drive-In. Um, so we pay for your tickets. And ladies and gentlemen, this is... Everything you see here are pretty well imported or built or custom designed these trees that you see here they all work the gum trees you can cut them down you can mine them for wood and it's based upon the actual Mornington Peninsula from Rosebud to Point Leo from it's almost near Rye all the way up to bottom ends of Mornington um, so uh, yeah it's it's been my labor of love I love the place I miss the place and if I can't visit it because of Charlie Victor 1-9er, I decided to build a full version of it. So I know who said it before you said, imagine playing game in Australia. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and you guys are going to get to play this soon as well. This is Rosebud. Um, if I uh, give you a good look at it, fly out. Let me just go out to the fly out. Um, I'll give you a look. Now, I've turned a lot of stuff off. So a lot of the things that normally are on, I've turned off at the Thompson. moment. Said, will you start a new map after? Certainly will be. I will be starting another map as soon as I get through Rosebud um, and working on some more stuff. So if you guys, are, I've turned off all the houses, turned off all the extras. So what you're seeing is basically um, everything that I've done. I don't know if anyone here is, knows Rosebud or anything else. I'll just set the weather a bit clearer for you guys. Um, but this is Rosebud Victoria. Turned all the houses off. I've got custom houses, custom models. I got everything on this, guys. Like, I'm from this. I know this place inside out. Um, there's the underpass. And if we go down here, we'll end up on Arthur's Seat. Oh, my favorite memories on Arthur's Seat. This is um, Arthur's Seat, Victoria. And a lot of car commercials are actually done on this, this particular road. Scott Nelson said that's fantastic. Thanks, Scott. So as you can see, uh, there's the chairlift. Uh, now, mine is set in the 80s, guys, by the way. So in case anyone's wondering, I built my game around the 80s. So I wound a lot of things back. So it's got the old chairlift um, and all that. And you can see, um, I just learned something new. If you move the mouse wheel while pressing the 5 button, it goes forwards and backwards. I've never known that. See, I learned something. Um, there's the chairlift, which go, looks over, looks out the seat. And it's a nice windy road that leads to the lookout at the top. That's a great little track I used to drive down. And uh, yeah, this gives you an idea of what can be done, no matter what it is. Uh, all of this, you see, I've put together from um, just mostly from my memory. Um, but then I've used a lot of google maps to do a lot of stuff too thompson said let me guess the chairlift works lul uh yes it does it, it actually will be working because we've got a, a script now that allows the chairlift Deep to work the tank said tell them add a map to the game uh can you repeat that one again that last question dl map was it can you add something i, I missed that one so here's getting to the top of the outlook it's 315 meters above sea level Got a few more models I'm finishing off. And this is the Arthur's Seat Lookout. I've got the original tower. And this is the Arthur's Seat Lookout that um, 
really exists. It really exists. I've got to turn the concrete back on. This is actually concrete, but I turned it off so you can't see the, the nice concrete things. So that is, is basically Grandpa's map, um, and it's huge. It, if you haven't been out to Rosebud, there's a lot of, there's a lot of country, there's a lot of beach, uh, there's a lot of small towns, uh, heaps of cool stuff, heaps of cool stuff, lots of places to hide. As you can see, it doesn't look anything like Daisy, especially when you add gum trees. Uh, all the roads are labeled. I actually have street signs on roads and everything. I know I'm nuts. Um, but you can see just the vastness. I think it is slightly in landmass bigger than Chernerus. So you can see it's, it's all these roads are in here. I've actually got street signs. I did turn them off just recently, uh, but they're all custom built. Every street sign is custom built, which I designed. The stars are Australian appropriate. So when it gets in a full night, you can actually see the Southern Cross, um, and all the rest of that, this farmland, and I've got all the buildings which I've just turned off while I'm speeding things up to build, and uh, just the sheer amount of roads. Yeah, I've got a few more things I've got to do. That's Rosebud, guys. So, in answer to the question, how awesome do you play a game in in Australia map? Well, yep, it's coming, guys. It's coming. Um, just me doing all this, 18 months, and Grandma was helping me till the computer died, and then it all came back. To grandpa having to do his stuff <laughs> which i enjoy so that's that hope i didn't uh, waste guys too much time showing you all that but i'm excited about it i'm excited of, of playing it too but every one of these roads all this stuff here you see that i've had to individually import and place down and so on and so forth and uh it's come along good it's come along good you guys will love it you, you can put this on a high pop server and you can have a lot of fun that's pretty well the limits. So there you go. Purple Makita said very smooth work. Thank you. Thompson said legend. Thanks. Thanks, mate. So there you go. I just, I heard someone say that before and I thought, yep, well, I better, better give a plug for it. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. Look, I really enjoy it, guys. <clears throat> if you're in double-minded about should you do a map, could you do a map, my answer is really simple. Yes, you can. I'm not just saying that. I mean, anyone can do it. I believe anyone can do it. And I've got two tutorials out there, um, which I'll have a new series coming on the website, which will be up soon. And you'll be able to learn step by step. But the trick to it is start with a small map. Don't go with a big one. Start with five kilometers by five kilometers. So you got to build a map, make it small, keep it simple, work from there. I've done a Airs Rock one, Uluru, and it's, it's fantastic, fun to play. And it's more of a death match than anything. Let's get back into it. Let me have one more sip of water. See how we're doing. And as I said, once I've done this, I will upload these files um, to for you guys to use. Just be kind and make sure that you do uh, do the appropriate thing, and make sure that you um, give credit to the common um, creativity rights, which will be in the link anyway so you'll be able to do all that um, that's all i ask make sure you do that do the right thing all right let's have a look and see where we go yeah we're getting so much closer and we'll get up to the final two stages one doors two glass glass is not a pain in the believe me it's not that hard so i'll show you a simple way to do it so let's go with uh, doors right now so we want to make that door function we want it to open so how do you make a door open in Daisy? It requires two things. And if we look at the Daisy um, web page, which you can Google this, uh, I will add these in the links. It requires two things. <clears throat> One, a model config. Don't worry, you don't have to learn scripting. You can use their sample and literally just change it to what you want. So, the model config will tell the, the actual building where the doors are, how many doors they are, there is. Purple Makita said, can you link this in chat PLS? Sure, sure. I'll do that right now for you. I'll add that as a link for you right now. Um, let's just pop it into, if you go in the live stream section for today, you'll notice it will be pasted right in there. 
so that you can see it directly in there as well. Um, and just also a little thing, guys, if you noticed, you might have noticed that on my screen, there's a little motorhome thing. Just so you guys know, and I'll just say it quickly, we, two years ago when COVID started, we, we bought a secondhand motorhome 2,000 kilometers from here, um, saved all the money, bought it, and Corona hit. We've never been able to bring it up here. It's sitting in the same place ever since. We've got to pay to get it shipped up. And that's why on the bottom there's a little bar thing there that occasionally someone throws five bucks or whatever else. If again, I'm not pressing, but if you can, guys, Grandma and I'd be so appreciative because we're just so excited after two years of being able to get it up here and start working on it. And it's also in the game because I designed the same motorhome to go in the game. So um, if you haven't seen it, just check it out on the Twitch thing or the links and um, be fabulous, guys, because everything helps. But anyway, having said that, going back to our model, the model will have a couple of things. Define the doors. Don't worry if you don't understand this. The model name what it's called, what the name of the model is, and then the doors and how they rotate. So two types of doors generally, rotating doors and sliding doors. So um, there, is a there is a sample you can download, which is available. They hide it right at the bottom. Somewhere it's sort of hidden there, repository. Right down there, you'll see there's a repository where you can download their sample model and toy with that. So all we really need is a config file like this, and we can simply start making our doors work. So the easy way to do it is copy and paste. <laughs> so we'll copy theirs here. So we'll just copy all that code. Don't worry if you don't know code, guys. It's a simple process once you've done it. We're going to copy all that code. We're going to go over to here and I'm going to open my Notepad++ free program, download it. It's very simple to use. And it's just a text editor like Notepad, but it lets you see in colors where things are. Paste it in. And obviously because this is just a config, it won't come up in color, don't worry. So I've just copied that in and I'm just going to save this. And you're going to save this one here as model.cfg. And you just, it'll be in the folder when you download this anyway. So don't worry. Um, we'll go into my tute folder. Thank you, Dino Bunos, for the inspiration to use your method of doing folder structure. I will do that from now on. So it's a great idea. So we're just going to create this in here and we're going to call it model.cfg, like that. It's now named in the chute folder, chute shed, model.config. So that's our first one we're going to need. So we'll stick with that to begin with. So looking at this, all we need to do is change a couple of simple things on any model. First of all, you are not going to need the two doors. So we're going to just delete that. And we're going to delete that little comma just so it knows it finishes right there at the code. Okay, door one. We're going to give the, um, the, the, an actual name, they call it a skeleton, but we're going to give it a name and we're going to call it, we're going to call it a shed door. And let's just call it toot shed, toot shed. We, I always like to keep things pretty much the same. Go. Okay. Don't worry about this. If you don't understand this, it's all preset. You will understand it as you do it more, and you may want to, but in the meantime, as you're toying, don't stress too much. So door one. Now, here's the important parts. It's it's going to, without getting into code, because I don't want to confuse you, um, it's going to tell the model there's certain information that, that define that model. Then as it goes into the next step, it's going to pull some of that information in that you've already established, and now it's going to look for a model name. Here's the big one. Be sure that whatever you put in here is the same as your one that we saved earlier or is in the folder that I give you if you do modify it. So it's called tootshed.p3d. So we want to make sure that we have that exactly the same for it to function. Okay. So we want to go in and we want to go your model name and we want to go 
toot shed like that the skeleton name is obviously going to be skeleton toot shed because i try to keep the same format so we'll do the same thing again skeleton toot shed and this is just copy and paste don't stress if it doesn't work because you'll find you just typed something incorrectly and the last part of this section is really just how the doors are going to work well we don't need door two thank you very much this one here we're going to delete door two and as a rule guys whenever you delete something see how the lines join each other this one goes to that one that one goes to that one that one goes to that one always be sure when you remove something that has an open bracket that you remove the respective closing bracket that's all you need to really keep in mind when deleting lines from code otherwise you will get issues but mean heroes when it compiles it if it finds an issue it's going to tell you where to find it anyway so always good to to get that right so as we can see now we just run through it this is how it defines itself this is where it creates the name of all the structure this is where the doors are established then it's pulling all that information together and then it's telling it how, which door how it's at this is going to tell the rotation so type equals rotation door and that's going to relate to directly guys it's going to relate directly to what's it going to relate to door one and door one El maestro said hello good morning or whatever time it is in australia tongue poking smiley <laughs> dead matter 2020 <laughs> thank you said, hey i just see a black screen do you you just see a black screen does anyone else just see a black screen i hope no one else just sees a black screen let me just check that i don't think ever, i think everyone else is seeing it all right let Dead me just... matter 2020 said yes is it my bad yes it is my bad oh it is yeah okay cool <laughs> you had me paranoid for a second there i thought something was majorly wrong that's all right so getting back into it um dead matter 2020 said Lou. <laughs> so as we said all we've just is to find is the doors door one the source it's going to choose is dead door matter one 2020 and the door axes said hey, uh, it was a question <clears throat> so it's just the axes were defined there <clears throat> what do you say matter there? 2020 said okay <laughs> oh, matter works now. Good. Good on you, mate. Said works now. So as we can see right here, this is just defining the axes. And then there's obviously there's the memory. Now I'm just gonna break this simple because you're gonna toy with this. The angle that the door opens is how much it's gonna open. Zero is closed. 1.4 is how much it opens. If the door doesn't open enough, you can add a bit to that, or you can delete. So that's pretty well the structure for creating your model config so the question now that always remains in everyone's mind is will the model config work well this is where we always have fun because it doesn't always work the first time so what we do you must reload your viewer if it does go wrong it's good because you'll get to see a debugging mode so we zoom in at our door and it works <laughs> now it works but it's good there's a bug it's going do we want it inwards or do we want it outwards? I wanted it outwards. So if we move the, the mouse wheel and see that door isn't grabbing the, um, it's leaving behind the, the hinge, which isn't a good thing. So uh, leaving behind the, the, the door handle. What am I saying? Door handle. So two things we need to fix really quickly. The rotation angle. So let's have a look at it again. It's rotating inwards. Easy to fix simply go into the text file add a minus like that hit save now that will fix our door rotation which means it'll rotate outwards so if it doesn't go the right way just add a negative or a positive and you'll find now it opens now you can see the angle it's opening i want that a bit more so to open it a bit more all I'm going to do, I'm going to add a six on there, save it, 
And this is all you really need to do to edit the models once you've got them in there. It's not coding, don't worry. You're not going to write code from scratch. You're simply going to take it, adjust it, and make it work for yourself. And it works a bit better. I like that. That looks Glossa. that's all looking good. Said best regards and thanks for your efforts. Ah, oh, you're very Glossa. welcome. Said some months ago, some rook told in a live stream that parts of the height map of Namelsk were generated by script. Do you uh, have experience how to change the height map in terrain builder by script? Glossa. Yes. Said best regards from Germany. Thank you, Costa. Thank you very much. Thanks for the question. Thank you for all the way from Deutschland. Um, I did German when I was young. Now I speak French. Um, Deutschland, the Demokratische Republik. I remember that when I was young. <laughs> Auf Wiedersehen. Uh, wie geht es in? What, um, in regards to, to that question was, yeah, yeah, when they do a generation of um, terrains and stuff, there is a way of generating via scripts. There is a way of doing them through other ways. There's about five ways I see you can do it. There is a way you can do it in Blender. There's a way I do it in, in QGIS, where I can generate real terrains. Uh, there is a way of doing it in Terrain Builder. Uh, there's a number of ways of doing it. So it's kind of, there's not just one way, there's multiple ways of generating. Um, and it's... I can do them any of any five ways. Also, said smiley face. <laughs> Glad you like that. All right, what I'll do is we'll just add the door handle to that. So if you see an object is not is not going with the door, like see for example, this is a good example. When I choose door, which is door one, which must must match the selection. All we're going to do is we're going to add to it. The actual door handle so we know that it is handle so if I just simply click it and then hit redefine that may do the right thing we should find that should pull the door together press F1 because I've got my my viewer set up to F1 and let's have a look if it doesn't it, it'll it'll be something else. there we go and look at that guys gals we now got a door that swings open and this was from a static model and even does it right at the hinges so you can see right at the hinges where it's supposed to so it's a nice clean little model guys we're just about there so there's only two more things we need to do at this point every model that you create must always always have a game config now these are crucial when you're compiling them when you're creating them putting them in your game creating an add-on the config is going to define several things most importantly who you are <laughs> your website link or whatever the path to the model what type of model it is and then it's going to re-establish the doors but it's going to tell them what sounds they make so i've got roller doors which make a big metal sound so they will be included in here there's a damage system so that when doors are hit or anything else um, how it damages the person so on and so forth and um, that's really all your game config is which will which works together with your model config so whenever you compile something you have to have this this is most important this is going to determine everything it to take the p3d and make it a binarized model as well so without that you don't get it and to give you a quick example which i always like to do uh, if we go and look at um, my houses oops let's go back let's have a look at the other one uh, let's look at my pub my pub is a good example of that for you guys if you haven't seen my aussie pub it's uh it will be published soon as well now shout out to um uh matt ost because the inspiration came from matt ost and i ported several of his models across uh from the older armor version I had to rewrite all the scripts uh but if it wasn't for matt ost um half these models probably wouldn't have just simply because um matt ost put a lot of work into them and then i had to re-script them all and get them all to work and um, he gave me all the rights to that, so I have no problem. Here's the Aussie pub. And as we can see, same thing again. It's got doors. 
I've customized this in a lot of ways too. Um, and as you can see, it's got different doors in it. There's internal doors. There's a bar door. Um, awesome. There's lighting that works. Is it okay? Just Blender ETC unknown to me. I thought there is still a way to manipulate the height map in the terrain builder via script. Uh, I must have misunderstood Sunrup's point then. Mm, good, Best good, thanks. Good point about the, the thing. There is a way of, of manipulating an terrain builder. El Maestro. Uh, Said there has been enough map library back from Armor 3, but I can't find it anymore. Yeah, I Do think... Do you know if there is an existing alternative? I, I'll i have a look for you. I think there might be. I think there might be. I'll have a look for you guys. So anyway, getting back to it, as I said, what I was showing you here was, very simple, your config CPP. And in my case here, it's the pub one. And it defines all of that information that's required and sometimes some extra stuff now i've got a little sound shader what is a sound shader when you approach the pub it's going to play music okay so it's going to play my own special music so when you walk in the pub you'll hear music coming out of the the, uh, the radio so that's what a config cpp is it is crucial that you have one you won't be able to zip up your models unless you do have one so um, let's create one of those. So we'll go, there's that one, that's one from there. Let's create a new one. And we'll call this, save as, config, must be named correctly. Like that, that's our config.cpp. And then if you're looking for the information, once again, simply grab the sample if you want to pull a sample out of the DayZ one, or once you get this, you can just use that as a guide. Mm -hmm. I'm learning the guitar, guys. I'm learning the guitar. I'm slowly getting better and better. My fingertips have got no feeling anymore. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is we're going to just modify this. So this is going to be the class, which is the name of our custom building, Toot Shed. Your name, Big Grandpa. Name, add-on name, Toot. You can put spaces in this one, it doesn't matter. Website link, which will be up soon, the new website, guys, which is uh, the DZ Academy. All the tutorials will be on there. So we're going to have a whole section, including a asset shop as well, which you can go on. Now, all we got to do here is add the model name in there. So once again, very, very crucial, guys, that when you do this, if you do this wrong, if you put the wrong word in there or the wrong spelling, you will not get it to function or pack. So just copy and paste if you're not sure. And that's our house, no destruct. Now, the path to your model, here's a simple way to do it. Most people don't realize this. All you need to do is hold down the shift, right click, copy as path, come back, and then you can just paste the whole path in there and just remove the P. That's all it needs. That's all it basically needs. Now we've got a door one. Uh, I won't go into detail today about these, but the the... The sound open, sound close, um, sound locked, uh, sound open a bit, so on and so forth. These all will be tied in with particular sounds in DayZ. And without confusing you, I won't draw that up too much. There's our class door too, which we don't need. So I'm going class door, bracket, to bracket, or italics. And I'm just removing the other one at the bottom, just down here. Same thing. Metallics here connects to the one below there. You can see where it connects in, in uh, Notepad++. So we're going to remove that. And then we're going to save that. So that is now our, our config CPP for, um, for being able to use. And I'm just using, as I said, the Daisy Doors um, one that they've got, the sample. And if you go to the bottom, and you go to the repository, you can download their sample building, um, which is a standard vanilla one. And you can actually download it from there. Plus, they've got their um, config CPP 
which is the one that they use in that particular building. And you can see here, for example, where they've used sound open, door, metal, twin, big, door, metal, small. These are just when it opens, when it closes, when it's locking, locked, when it's locked, or open a bit where it sort of rattles when you try to open it. And that's that's how those doors basically work based upon those sounds. Fuzzifruzzler said, did you need to also delete the backslash when you deleted the P? Uh, yes and no. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. <laughs> sometimes I do delete it and sometimes I don't. I thought it, it used to need it. And then someone else said you'd leave it in. And then I got confused. Um, so I was like, okay, yeah, but normally I do. You're right. Thanks for pulling me up on that. See, but normally I do. If you don't, I found it still worked anyway. So here's our sound open door closed for the sake of argument. Let's just copy that across. And we'll just pop those in so that it gives it the proper sounds. And we'll just get the spaces out of there. Like that. And always double check your work. Toot shed. See, I'm saying it like, like Dino now. Toot, toot shed. Uh, big grab on Yep. Land, toot shed. Toot shed. Doors, door one, door one, door one action. All those are saved and we're done. We're done with those. And knock on wood, everything is going to be all right. Because at the end of the day comes the night and everything's going to be all right. Let's have a look. So we will just close down the pub again. And we are at the last phase of this building and this stream, which will be fun. Because once I'm done, I'll upload it. You guys can take it. Shout out to me. Most of all, uh, Creative Commons, make sure that you use the correct Creative Commons to uh, Shedmon down here. And you'll find here is the Creative Commons licensing agreement when you download it. And I will give you a link in the live stream as well. So you can get straight to that model, which will be here like that. So you guys can access that for that particular tutorial that I just did. That'll all be there. And make sure that you do the creative comments. Don't do the wrong thing, guys. Don't do the wrong things, please. So there we go. We got that all done. And we just need to add glass. So here we are, guys. The final stage. Glass. And I'll show you how to do that. Glass. Glass is fun. Glass is simple if you know how to do it. So we're going to use this great resources tab. As I said before, <laughs> that is available by hitting windows and then going into the uh, resource library see it'll open it up and you'll have access to all of your uh, hard drive as well as your model folder so you can access your textures within a quick click rather than going through and a lot of people add textures like this they choose a surface then they press e and then they find the surfaces and then they go through here and then they scroll through there and don't do that Save yourself the time, save yourself the headache. Using this is going to make it 10 times better. Why? Because you can open and preview the textures right here. You can open up pretty well anything, including RV mats, and alter the way reflections work and everything else. More complicated, won't go into it. Let's do your glass. So let me give you a sample of one of my glass that you've done so that you can see what a finished glass looks like because glass isn't that much of a pain in the believe me I used to think it was till I figured out workarounds to get it so here's my kiosk for my your drive-in theater that you saw snack bar kiosk etc etc make sure I haven't got that open I will open that up over here and let's bring up my snacky bar Still doing a bit of work on this one, so it, it's not in a fully completed mode, but it's set in the 80s, as you can see. Probably the best movies of 87. <laughs> Lost Boys, Full Metal Jacket, Cocktails. That was 1985, but hey, it showed for a few years at the drive-in. So here is glass. 
Now, glass itself, if you just put it in, it's just going to look shiny. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways to make glass look dirty as well, because some people like their glass to look dirty. Um, i got a habit of cleaning all my glass. So if you want to, if you want to do dirty glass, I'll show you how to do it. Snack bar. There, and here's what dirty glass looks like. So now, the difference between clean glass and dirty glass is just one layer which defines grime, grime on the glass. That's all it is. It's always harder to see in here, but if you look now, you guys may be able to pick up the grime on that glass. It gives it a more realistic sort of visual effect, like that salt spray grime kind of look. Um, I'm going to show you how to very, very simply do that. And to do that, I'm going to demonstrate right here what makes up glass. Because glass is a fun thing and it's quite easy to do. You just have to know how to do it. So if we go to selecting up here, you'll find there's a tab that says faces. Not feces, faces. If you select on any face like this, you'll find that it's going to highlight one of your panes of glass that you can you can work on. Now, obviously at the moment I'm trying to figure out which one it is, so it'll be this one right here we're looking at. Yep, that's the right one. Um, yep, yep, it's that one right there, so it's this one here. Now, with glass, glass has to have two things. It has to have a glass image, and then secondly, it has to have what they call an RV mat, which will define uh, whether it's a you know transparent, whether it's got you know a lot of reflection, whether it, you know it's got grime and dirt on it. So as a rule, always as a rule for me, whenever I do glass, see if we look in the folder because guys, I'm looking in the model folder, and I look at glass, not grass. And I open it, you'll notice it's grey. Now this is a PNG transparency. It's meant to be that way because I want the glass to be a see-through surface like that. And then on top of that, remember we're going to add a another layer which is called window set RV mat, which is this one. And the beauty of this is if I double click it, it brings up this cool Material editor, which most people don't know about, which then don't be daunted. I'm just showing you, so enjoy the the free show. Unless you want to throw some money towards Grandpa picking up his motorhome. Um, here you can see that the most important ones is this one down the bottom is a land reflection. So a land reflection simply will give it that reflection, like it's seeing uh, uh, something in the background. And that's what gives it that real sort of uh, realistic look, which will only be an image like this, which can reflect anything. You can put any image here and it will just reflect that. And then, of course, the other one is your window set no HQ. There's actually two, but this is the good one, the window set SMDI. Let me show you that, guys, because you can get these out of the DZ folder. So the window set uh, SMDI, when we will open it, simply looks like this. And wherever you see the dark red, means that it'll be a deeper, darker color, kind of like, you know, when we, we go up and look at it up close, you can see there's sort of a reflection and then there's a dirty sections. So those darker sections are more of the grime. And the, light, and the lighter sections are more transparent. So that is a simple image that you can pull out of the DZ folder and customize to your heart's content. So creating it, what you're going to need, as I said, um, we'll just go back, we'll open up that, um, where is it again? I'll just find down here, yep. There is one more and it's the the no the normals uh, HQ. You probably really won't use it on glass as much, but you can. And that basically is if there's any any raised surfaces or anything else like that. In this case, there is none, but I've still included one. Um, but if I wanted a bumpy glass or a sort of a stained glass, you know, you could get you know, at that. Anyway, you guys get the picture. 
So here we go. How do you actually create one of these? You simply borrow the ones straight out of DayZ. Why? Because they've already got them there for your use. So why not take advantage? So with our uh, model, all we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to just have a look in the DZ folder. Because this is the last state of, stage of this model, technically. Farrell Cash said this building looks great. Thank you. Um, thanks for that. So we're looking here and we just have, have a look through residential. <clears throat> and we're going to look through houses. Because so we're going to look for glass, right? Now, if I just simply just type glass into Windows search, it's going to go through that and all the subfolders, or it should, which it didn't. <laughs> Must, mustn't search subfolders like it used to. It changed its mind today. And it's showing no no ones in there as either, which is pretty well typical of Windows. Um, so what I'll do, if you're ever trying to find something, you're not sure where it is, simply go back to structures, Type in glass, because it was in the data folder, I think. And this will bring up all the glass for you. So with the glass, there's going to be several types of glass, but you can just double click on them and see what type of glass. Now that's sort of a more opaque factory glass. That's a transparency one. And it's got a little mark down there, which doesn't matter. You could use that. So that's a that's sort of a glass type one. You could use that. Um, and there's another one. So all we really need is a transparency glass to put in. Now there's more of a damaged glass. Are you going to use damaged glass? You could use that one, damaged and dirty. Uh, so let's just grab this one here. So we'll grab the glass one. We'll copy it. And we'll just go back into our folder. And we'll pop it inside the data section. So we've got a copy of it. Tunker, just like that is our glass one. And we'll go back to that the other folder because we're going to need one more thing. Where is it? I'll just go back, back, back. And here's our glass one. Now we're going to cash. Said Glosser Handy AUS Den Sekel Zuokans work. Grinning face with smiling eyes, grinning face with smiling eyes. Is that Glosser Handy Austin? Saken Zurich as work. Excuse my father, my Deutsche, <laughs> my German. Uh, uh, Dankeschön. <laughs> so, all we need now is an SMDI. As I said, the SMDI def will do basically define whether the glass is dirty or clear or it's got any kind of grit on it or anything else like that. So, <clears throat> in here we can see if there's any SMDIs and we're sort of looking through. Um, and I'll tell you what, guys, I'll give you a copy of my SMDI that I use in mine. Because you can edit them anytime you want. Where is it? Toot. Share. Uh, actually, I've got to get back into my other model. Um, um, drive in cinema. And I'll just grab the one out of my folder and I'll give you this. So you can use this anytime you want as well. So uh, just type. SMDI, SMDI to narrow down the search. Windows Feral cash. Said grandpa's thumbs up sign. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're just going to pop this into our shed data, paste it in there. And that's our window set there, which as I said, it's got all the grime. I, I probably got this one out of Daisy folder Glosser. somewhere. Said grinning face. <laughs> Thanks, Loza. All right. So what we're going to do now is add some glass to this. So how are we going to do it? It's real simple. Window. Now, window is only the wood. So if I bring up my other screen, we should see it. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope you're learning something from this. <clears throat> Remember, guys, I, uh, I do this for the love of it. But if you can like, subscribe, share, whatever you can do, if you can help support Grandma and Grandpa are on their quest to finally get their motor home up from 2,000 kilometers away. Feel free. All right, here we go. So glass, we've selected the glass at the moment. And now all I'm going to do is sometimes what happens when you add a new file, you won't see it inside of here. Sometimes you will. In this case, I think we are seeing it. There it is. We're going to 
substitute that. So we're going to use that one. Now that's used kind of that other gritty kind of one, which is all right. I could still get I could still get by with that one, guys. Trust me, I could still use that one. Here's where the fun begins, and it's real simple. We've got it selected. UV filter main texture glass. Don't worry about all the complexities. Simply hit this. It'll build a box. And then using that, we can now just simply stretch the box Farold Cash to fit. Said we have the old tourist joke. <laughs> there are no kangaroos in Austria. <laughs> I like that. Uh, that's good. There we go. Bit of glass. Bit of glass, guys. Glass, glass ain't a pain in the ass. So we got a bit of dirt on that. I like that. It actually came up pretty good. You can see there's a bit of dirt on it, on our glass. And what's next? We just need to add the RV mat to give it a bit of a glass shine to it. So once again, we just simply select the glass. And we're going to apply, hopefully we Feral can cash. find it. Said, and that's even wrong, because we have some in Scondroon. Ah, there you go. I know I was in San Diego for a while, and they even had kangaroos there. But obviously, it's not native to it, but um, they did have some kangaroos. So, i got to find my uh, RV mat, which didn't show up, so maybe I didn't transfer it across. Let me have a double check, guys. We'll save a... ABS, always be saving, and I hope you guys are excited. We're almost done with this. No, I didn't save across that RV mat that I had before. So let's just steal one of Grandpa's RV mats straight out of my uh, drive-in theater. I'm excited we got through this glass, and we'll put, um, just put glass. I just want to break it down. Glass um, plate. Feral Actually, cash. Said yep. this is a zoo. Yep. A zoo, yeah. yeah. But <clears throat> we got lots of uh, kangaroos here, actually. I'm not making this up either, because a lot of Aussies, that's silly when you say to them, kangaroos bouncing in the street. I do. I literally, the other night, I walked out the front and almost got run over by a kangaroo. It bolted past me and scared the, the crap out of me. So we got paddocks of them, absolute paddocks of them. Um, all i got to do is just paste... I'm just copying this shiny thing. You can use this, guys. It's it's an RV mat, but we've got to make sure that everything is in there for it to do it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this across because it's the last part of our model, really. Technically, it's the last part. And shoot, shed, data, paste. And we will simply just add that to it. Come on, mousey, mousey, no play, play. Come on, it does this sometimes. It makes me... It makes me have fun. So we'll just close that. And obviously we'll just add it. I'll add it the old-fashioned way. Like that. Apply. OK. And. And your glass will actually have, it's kind of hard to see on there, but it will have some reflection. Now, if I'm not happy with the dirt or whatever, which I'm not happy with that looks at all, actually, so I'm going to go and change that. Uh, glass. We're actually going to have a look at that RV map. There it is. It's reappeared. Fuzzy Fuzzler said, "No ruse in my area, but lots of galas wink." <laughs> Good old Fuzzy. Have we got we got kangaroos down in Rosebud? I think. Let me think. I, c I can't even recall now. I know there was a, I know there was one um, mountain lion for a long time, and I witnessed it twice. That was part of a zoo that escaped. Um, but I can't Fuzzy Fuzzler. think. Said him in Morty though. Hmm. Yeah, because I was almost certain there was there was actually some kangaroos. I hope there was, because I put them in my game. It better be. All right. Let's just get this on here. Might add it a little bit. That was the dirty bit there. As I showed you before, guys, all I'm doing here is... Actually, now, if you see an odd shape like that, the reason you're seeing an odd shape is very simple. It's 
Because of the view that you're selecting, that's highlighted. Just to hi positive. highlight that. Said maybe in the 80s, mate. Yeah. I, I don't know if Rosebud has, still has kangaroos. I'm trying to think. Surely it does. I know up here we've got tons of them. Buggers are everywhere. Um, I'm just moving this around. As you guys can see, because I'm moving it around here, I'm looking it over there to see what it looks like to get an idea. So I'm just trying to use both views to give us a nice little... Glass is always fun to learn, but once you've learnt it, you'll get a real feel for it. So I'm just moving it around on the image, trying to find the best one that reflects what I want it to look like in the game. Um, because that's kind of dirty kind of glass, and I can bring that in and bring that in and clean it up a Farrell bit. Farrell Cash said, do you have a ute? <laughs> do I have a ute? No, I drive a Trans Am. <laughs> I drive a Pontiac Firebird. So, um... Farrell Cash said, got... with mud flaps. With mud flaps. <laughs> I should have. I should have. And it's a little bit transparent. I can make that clearer than that if I wanted to. But for the sake of argument, you can see through it. I've made it dirty. I have another one, which is just, yeah, but I made it look a bit dirty. There it is, guys. There is, you can see the reflection on the glass. We can see our models all working. See, doors working. <clears throat> We've added all of our appropriate geometry to it. We've created all of our components, added memory points for our doors. We've created a roadway that makes sounds when you walk on it. We've got a view geometry, which uh, will allow where the zombies can see us. One thing when you do view ge geometries, guys, make sure that um, you hit the uh, structure, topology, find non-closed. If they read, you want to make sure you close them. And that's pretty well the whole basis of building that. And now fire geometry where whatever items they hit, as you saw earlier, will make those appropriate sounds. That, guys, is pretty well our model that we've got all ready to go. And what I'll do now is with any kind of luck, and we don't always have luck doing this, we're going to use Makiro's, guys. Please, please only use Makiro's for compacting your projects. Now, this is the part that everyone gets to at the end, and then they always go, it's not compacting. Trust me, that's going to happen. So... I'm just going to, um, I'm going to put this in with my Rosebud one, because why not? I might as well just throw it in my model as well. So, and I'm going to choose that source folder. And we may get some errors, and I hope we do, because it allows me to show you how easy it is to generally find the problems. So, doot, shed, and select folder, and crunch, and wait for the first error. Grandpa, too good. <laughs> Grandpa too good. Grandpa didn't get any errors. <laughs> there we go, guys. So it's now compacted, and it is going to be. I can even probably throw it in and show you on offline in my thing. I could, I could probably pull it in pretty easy. So let's see what we can do, shall we? Um, Fuzzle said first time all the time. <laughs> I wish. I wish I could say I was that good that I do it every time, but no, I don't. I don't. Even a geriatric like me has problems now and then. Um, so um, there's our toot shed. I'm just going to, you don't have to worry about what I'm doing here. I'm just copying this across, guys, so I can put it in my um, local server. I will do on a tutorial coming up how to do a local server, how easy it is, um, that you can test offline and even have a LAN game where people can come and play locally. Um, it's fun. But it works like a charm. So what we're going to do now, I'm just going to run up my server and hopefully if everything runs smooth, we might be able to drop this in. We'll see if we can. I didn't create any ground contact points. I should have told you about that, but that's okay. We won't need to. So I'm just going to load up my um, Rosebud map and hit my server and join it. And hopefully, with any kind of luck, we can drop the model in there and we might not be able to run in it. So, couldn't be so lucky, but you never know. I had first time I've ever compacted it and not had something missing. 
<laughs> it means grandpa ain't losing it completely yet. That's what it means. Hey, you guys are wonderful. I'm glad you guys have uh, joined me and you've stuck around. We're just about at the end, but I want you to see it and I'm going to then upload it and give you guys a link. As I said, Creative Common Attributes, please give the person who designed it a shout out, a reference. That's most important. We don't want to get in trouble and we want to allow content creators to do stuff freely without charging us and also getting their credit. Harold Cash said the trans is the alternative future that I would like to have. <laughs> Flat as a rocket and a big V8. <laughs> that was the perspective and now we have eco-fascists. <laughs> I love it. Let me get the game screen on over there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, NZ Jocko. You're a legend. Thanks, brother. I think you just made the bar move up. You did. Yeah. yeah. You can see the motorhomes getting there closer. Thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate that, NZ. That that means the world. Thank you, mate. Thanks, Dad Matter, also for following me along. I don't know. You, you probably hope you're still on there. Okay. So let's go and have a look and we will see what we can pull off here in the way of dropping that model down. I don't know if this is going to work in this way, but we will try. Spawn menu, turn off safe. And I'll just search for toot shed. And if it doesn't appear, let's do it. Let's do it again. Come on. I always use the other. Actually, I like using the other one better than this one, but I haven't got it activated. Spawn menu expert. Come on, you, you bad boy work. Inventory ground. There it goes. Now, you can probably wondering why it's underground, and that's because we didn't create land points, so it doesn't know where. Let me just move forward. Let me just move forward. Um, where is it? Teleport me 10 meters forward. There we go. This is more cumbersome, this one, the other one. But, hear the wood? See? So we can see, when you drop them in without doing them terrain builder, then it won't be set at the right level, but we can see um, it actually works and we can hear the sound. The door probably will open. <laughs> it's a little house. And you can see through the glass. We can crawl in. Can we crawl in? Yeah. Grandpa in his little cubby house. There we go. So we can see inside the house. Has it got impact on the walls? Yes, it's got impact on the walls, which is great. And I'll crawl back out of there. And the reason it's on the ground is I didn't add a land contact and we dropped it in straight inside of, um, I was using Zombery tools, but as I said, that's concrete, grass, and wood. Now, obviously hitting it is going to make a different sound. Hear it? So that's because we established different sounds. Now, I couldn't establish a sound for glass as well if I want, which I didn't, but you can hear the wood sound. See? The metal. And that, unfortunately, because it was on the ground, I can't pick it up. But if we want to add a land contact, we can add a land contact to it, and it will work perfectly. So normally if we drop that into Rain Builder, we can set the height and everything else. So let's just have a look at something really quickly and we're just about done guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope some people learnt some cool techniques. I hope they got a the fear of object builder behind them for a change. I hope you guys um, aren't, as, aren't as afraid of terrain builder as you were once before. Daisy Tools. And we're open terrain builder and I'll show you when we drop an object in so you can see. We drop it in. <clears throat> and all I've got to do is this is going to open the, the Rosebud map, which I, I don't really want to mess that one up at the moment because it'll take too long. Gold rule when I get to showing your maps, guys, build your map small. Be sure and build your map small because smaller maps load a lot quicker. Um, so we're going to open my uh, Outback Uluru, formerly known as Ayers Rock. And you guys are going to see 
um, how easy it is to drop an object in. While that's loading up, what I will do, I'll just quickly go into my tube shed, open up that P3D, and I'll just create a land contact. Very, very simple. Now, there are some things I didn't show you, which is okay. Um, Pop it is, and we'll just call this one land contact. And all the land contact has to be is a, a couple of points, so it knows where to contact the land. So we're going to go one there. I'm going to copy paste it, and then I'm going to move it across so that it's equally proportioned. And same here. Oops. Undo that one. X, move it across there, whoops, Control Z, I'll select both, move them across, copy and paste, move them across. That's our land contact points. Now this line, usually whenever you build a model, it's got to be above that line to be above land contact. But if you do create the points, it's going to do it fine. So we'll leave it like that, save it. And obviously we would have to recompact that that P3D for that to work. So we'll just minimize that for a second. Here's my Outback one. Let's add another test building in here. So we'll add a new template. We will point it to the shoot folder where I put it. And we'll tell it to put that P3D in there. Give it a color. What color do I want? Uh, shed that color. And there we go, there's our chute shed. And let's just jump on in and drop it in there. So when you're adding things in Terrain Builder later on, guys, when you do this, what are you gonna do? Just gonna choose your object and you're just gonna drop it in wherever you want it. So let's put one at the back of the pub, like that. Save. And now you should find, you'll have a, You'd have a um, a little shed there. Now, the reason I said do a small map, 5K by 5K, because you'll notice that when you're editing it, testing it, it loads a lot quicker, so you're going to have less time sitting around waiting. If I was to load my Rosebud one, we could all have a coffee before it opened, because it does take that amount of time. Here we go, and we're up to the final stage. As I said, I will zip all these up, put them on a download. You guys can grab it, do whatever you like. Let me know what your um, feedback is, because I want to hear what you guys do <coughs> with your shed. There's my shed, as we can see. And the ground isn't level, so that's okay. We can just quickly level that ground up anyway, so that it fits in the right position. In, yep. And just make that a bit smaller. I'll be teaching all this to you guys soon as well, in case you haven't done mapping. Um, so you'll get a good understanding of all this stuff you see me doing here. It is quite easy for anyone to do. <clears throat> and F, select my model. And then I'm just going to raise it off the ground a little bit. So it sits where we want it. And don't worry, you don't see the top of the building because it's a proxy and it comes in in game, but not here. And I'll just move this shed around here. I might actually just give it a little rotate while we're at it. A little shed. And there's our little shed that we built today, guys. And I'll just level that ground so that it sits on the ground nicely. Bingo. Done. Too easy. And that would be then when you play the game, that is going to be your building in-game. And that's pretty cool, guys. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. I know it's Seems like a lot of work, and it is in some degrees, but at the other side of it, it's worth every moment that you spend once you see your map come to life. So what I will do, guys, as I said, I will uh, zip up all those um, those uh, files. I will add them um, onto my download. I'll give you a link. Um, I'll give you a link on, uh, on my download section so that if you guys want to download those mods, I'll have it on there. Uh, let me just check. I'll tell you where I'll put it. So in case you're looking for it, we will put it in the um, grandpa's mod. 
I will put it, I will create a new channel in here and it'll be called toot toot files files create there you go and in that one there I will actually have for you guys um, all the tutor tutorial files um, from the stream so you can just grab them and you guys can mess around with it to your heart's content so Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much, um, NZ Jocko, for uh, supporting me on that. Dead Matter 2020 for following. Purple Mike Euro, awesome. Thank you for following. Marlo BMX, you've been a legend. Um, obviously, Wiser the other day. Thanks so much, brother, if you're watching. I know, but thank you so much for, for helping me out the other day. Um, every cent helps for us. We've had no work um, for two years. We lost all our business, but we're trying to get that. GMC, and in case you guys are wondering before we go, I'll show you quickly the two things that uh, are my passion. And the first one is, um, where's the first one? Here it is. First one is my GMC. <laughs> looks like that. That's not mine. That looks exactly like mine. That one's a lot cleaner, but it's exactly the same model, same color, same year, same everything. And um, the other thing that I absolutely love is... Uh, my Trans Am, which I used to have a, here it is, I don't know if i got a picture in there, but I actually had a picture on here of my Trans Am, um, which none of those are mine, um, but I did have a picture of it. Oh, I'll have to find that again and show you next time, because <clears throat> you muscle car freaks are going to pretty well love love my car. It's, uh, it's yeah, it's a great car. Absolutely love it. Um, sitting in the garage, haven't done much with it lately, because I can't afford fuel. <laughs> But I still got it. I still got it. So it's all cool. So once again, guys, thank you so much for all your support. Thank you, Fuzzy, for uh, always being there for me, brother. Um, and also Equilibrium and stuff. I know you've shared some stuff with us. Um, I joined his Discord the, the other day as well. Uh, good old um, Equilibrium Studies on Discord. Great channel. And he's been putting my tutorials up and sharing them. So the more you share this, guys, the better it gets. Check out the DZ Academy uh, uh, Discord channel because it's growing as you can see. People are always asking questions. Um, cool, I need help making up. Sent me an email. I'll just give him a little no worries sort of uh, what do I do on here? Give him one of these. And we'll be right. Guys, you're all legends. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for helping each other out. Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing regular updates. A new format coming. Also got a co-host coming online. If you want to help us out, do whatever you can to help us out. Stick around. Have fun. Till next time, guys. Take care. This is Big Grandpa telling you, make sure that you have a great day, Z. Bye for now.